The Southern Palestine Offensive, employing maneuver warfare, began on 31 October 1917, with the Battle of Beersheba, during the Sinai and Palestine Campaign, of World War I. After the capture of Beersheba, by the Egyptian Expeditionary Force EEF, the Gaza to Beersheba line became increasingly weakened and, seven days later, the EEF successfully forced the Ottoman Turkish Empire's 7th and 8th armies to withdraw. During the following seven days of pursuit, the Turkish forces were pushed back to Jaffa. There followed three weeks of hard fighting in the Judean Hills before Jerusalem was captured on 9 December 1917. During five and a half weeks of almost continuous offensive operations, the EEF captured 47.5 miles .4 kilometers of territory. After a joint attack by the XX and the Desert Mounted Corps, Beersheba at the eastern end of the Gaza to Beersheba line, was captured. The next day, on 1 November, the Battle of Telephone el Kuwailf began, with an advance north of Beersheba into the Judean Forehills, by the 53rd Welsh and the Anzac Mounted Divisions. This move up the road from Beersheba to Jerusalem, also threatened Hebron and Bethlehem. Then, during the night of 1 half November, the Third Battle of Gaza took place on the Mediterranean coast, when limited attacks by the 21st Corps were made against strongly held, formidable defences. The next day, the fiercely contested fighting south of Telephone el Kuwailf by the EEF was not designed to capture Hebron, but to create sufficient area for the deployment of the 20th Corps, for a flank attack on the central defences of the Old Gaza to Beersheba line. Fighting for the Beersheba to Jerusalem Road, also encouraged the Turkish commanders to deploy their reserves, to hold the EEF threat. On 6 November the Battle of Herrera and Sharia was launched on the center of the Old Line, halfway between Gaza and Beersheba, and Herrera was captured, but it was not until late the next day, that the Sharia position was finally captured by the 60th London Division, after a failed charge by the 4th Light Horse Brigade Australian Mounted Division. The 7th and the 8th Armies were by now in full retreat from the remains of the Old Gaza to Beersheba Line. On 7 November, the second day of the battle for Herrera and Sharia, the 52nd Lowland Division and the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade advanced unopposed through Gaza to attack strong rearguard positions at Wadi el Hesi, which were captured the next day. Topic. Background After the first two battles for Gaza, it was obvious to British commanders that large reinforcements were needed to set General Murray's army in motion again. Indeed, Murray made it clear to the War Cabinet and the Imperial General Staff early in May, that he could not invade Palestine without reinforcements. The War Office assured him in the same month, that he should prepare to receive reinforcements, which would bring the Egyptian Expeditionary Force EEF up to six infantry and three mounted divisions. However by July, when General Edmund Allenby took command of the EEF, 5,150 infantry and 400 yeomanry reinforcements were still needed after the casualties suffered during the battles for Gaza. By the end of the 1917 summer in the Northern Hemisphere, the political and the strategic interests of the British government and the EEF coincided. This was due in part to the failure on the Western Front of the French Republic's Nouvelle Offensive and the success of the German submarine campaign against British Empire shipping. The destruction of British shipping caused severe shortages in Britain, and although the United States of America had entered the war, their military support would not be apparent for some time. Britain was about to enter a fourth year of extremely costly war, and their Prime Minister, David Lloyd George, appreciated the need to take into account the home front. He believed a striking military success could bolster the morale of the civil population, and he told Allenby that he wanted Jerusalem as a Christmas present for the British nation. Lloyd Gorge made clear that this victory was needed in order to strengthen the staying power and morale of Britain. 
The British War Cabinet needed a successful Palestine offensive at a time when there was not much good news coming out of the Western Front, and when it was beginning to look like the war could extend into 1919. If they could capture Jerusalem this would put pressure on the Ottoman Empire, which could in turn place a strain on the German alliance, at the same time enhancing Britain's long-term aim of strengthening their influence in the Middle East. By the end of October, the EEF was ready to attack, the decision to launch a major offensive in Palestine, in the autumn of 1917, was also based on very sound strategical reasons. The collapse of the Russian Empire in the spring led to the withdrawal of Russia from the war, as a consequence of the Russian Revolution, and freed up large numbers of Ottoman Empire troops, which had been fighting the Russians on the Eastern Front. These Ottoman units became available to reinforce the Palestine Front and were in the process of assembling near Aleppo, along with German soldiers and equipment. They were to launch operations to recapture Baghdad, which had been captured by the British in March. The threat to Baghdad could be more economically opposed by an EEF offensive in southern Palestine. Rather than sending reinforcements to General Frederick S. Maud's Mesopotamian army holding Baghdad, British reinforcements from the Salonika Front, which the War Office wanted to scale down, would strengthen the EEF. Allenby's strategical objective was a defeat of the Ottoman army in southern Palestine, decisive enough to ensure Ottoman reinforcements destined for Baghdad were diverted to Palestine. However, by 5 October, General William Robertson, SIGS, telegraphed Allenby that the War Cabinet desired him to eliminate the Ottoman Empire out of the war by a heavy defeat, followed by the occupation of the Jaffa-Jerusalem line. He was to be supplied with fresh British divisions at the rate of one every 16 days. Quote, it was not until after the launching of the offensive that Allenby was told such increases to his force were improbable. Allenby estimated the Ottoman army could have 20 divisions, with no more than 12 on the front line. However, as these could be replaced by the Ottoman army, the EEF could not field more than 14 divisions after the doubling of the railway line from Kantara, because of the limitations of the EEF's supply lines. Between April and October 1917, both the EEF and the Ottoman army laid railways and water pipe lines, and sent troops, guns and huge quantities of ammunition to the front. By mid-October 1917, a staff appreciation from London acknowledged the strength of the Ottoman defenders in southern Palestine, and that any attempt to dislodge them from the Gaza to Beersheba line could cost three divisions. The appreciation acknowledged that T. He Turk is a stubborn fighter in trenches and we must expect that in any event he will stand long enough to cause us serious loss. We must be prepared to supply General Allenby with three more divisions. To relieve weakened divisions. Topic. Battlefield The Gaza to Beersheba line was defended by both sides during the stalemate in southern Palestine from April to the end of October 1917. The EEF front line extended for 22 miles 35 kilometers from the Mediterranean coast at Gaza to a point on the Wadi Gaza near El Gamli, about 14 miles 23 kilometers southwest of Sharia and 18 miles 29 kilometers west of Beersheba on the southern edge of the plain of Philistia. On the coast, a strip of sand dunes varying between 2 to 4 miles 3.2 to 6.4 kilometers wide was impassable for wheeled vehicles. Between the sand dunes and the Judean Hills, which rise to 3,000 feet 910 meters, the mainly undulating, downland, plains stretched between 15 and 20 miles 24 and 32 kilometers wide. The plains were intersected by many wadis, which transformed into raging torrents, rushing down from the bare rocky Judean mountains during the wet winters. The region was sparsely populated, with each village depending on its well for water, while crops of barley were grown. 
From this area, the topographical conditions of the plain are unchanged for 80 miles 130 kilometers northwards, becoming the plain of Sharon from Jaffa, to finally end at Mount Carmel near Haifa. Topic. Prelude The Ottoman army in Palestine commanded by Marshal Erich von Falkenhayn was nearly 50,000 strong, while General Allenby's EEF was 76,000 strong. Topic. Defending force Until June 1917, Sharia was the headquarters of the German commanded defenders holding the Gaza Beersheba line. In August 1917, the Fourth Army was structured as Fourth Army, Syria Palestine, Third Cavalry Division, Eighth Corps, Forty Eighth Division, Twelfth Corps, Twenty Third Division, Forty Fourth Division. 15th Corps 43rd Division 20th Corps 16th Division 54th Division 22nd Corps 3rd Division 7th Division 53rd Division The 4th Army in Palestine was reorganized into two corps. The 20th Corps was expanded from the 16th and 54th Infantry Divisions to include the 178th Infantry Regiment and the 3rd Cavalry Division, while the 22 Corps' three divisions remained unchanged. The 20th Corps was headquartered at HUJ, while the 22nd Corps defended Gaza with the 3rd and 53rd Divisions. By July the 8th Army commanded by Friedrich Freiherr Kress von Kressenstein consisting of six infantry divisions and one cavalry division, had an estimated strength of 46,000 rifles, 28,000 sabers and 200 guns. Topic. Yildirim Army Group Germany had suggested that six or seven Ottoman divisions released as a consequence of the Russian army's withdrawal from the war, should attack Mesopotamia with German support. Germany would supply ammunition, equipment, troops and gold along with one of Germany's most distinguished soldiers, Erich von Falkenhayn, and an army headquarters staff. These German reinforcements included the German Asia Corps, three battalion groups of hand-picked and thoroughly trained infantry, very strongly supported by artillery, machine guns, mortars, aircraft and mechanical transport. The Ottoman Empire would contribute a new 7th Army made up of divisions transferred from the Caucasus and the Balkan fronts. Following the formation of the Yildirim Army Group in June 1917, substantial forces were deployed to Syria and Palestine, where they continued to hold the 4th Army defenses. Already in Palestine were the 3rd, 7th, 16th, and 54th Infantry Divisions while the 26th, 27th, and 53rd Infantry Divisions arrived during the summer. The 3rd, 7th, 16th, and 26th Infantry Divisions had fought in the Gallipoli Campaign and the 3rd Cavalry Division had fought in the Caucasian Campaigns. These seven infantry divisions and one cavalry division formed the recently activated Ottoman Eighth Army. On establishment, the Yildirim Army Group consisted of Ottoman Army troops already in Palestine and Mesopotamia. These included the 19th and the 20th Divisions from Galicia, the 24th and the 42nd Divisions from the Dardanelles, the 48th Division from the Caucasus, the 50th Division from Macedonia, and the 59th from Adana in the Gulf of Iskanderun. The 1st and 11th Divisions were also transferred from the Caucasus to the Yildirim Army Group, arriving in time for the attempt to retake Jerusalem at the end of December, and in March 1918 respectively. In August 1917, the Yildirim Army Group consisted of 7th Army, Syria, Merliva Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, 3rd Corps, 24th Division, 3,200 rifles, 15th Corps, 19th Division Est. 4,000 Rifles 20th Division German Asia Corps 
Sixth Army, Mesopotamia, Merliva Halil Cut. Thirteenth Corps, Second Division, Sixth Division, Eighteenth Corps, Fourteenth Division, Fifty First Division, Fifty Second Division, Forty Sixth Division, Forty Second Division, Forty Eighth Division XX Corps at HUJ. 16th Division 3,789 rifles 54th Division 2,738 rifles 178th Infantry Regiment 3rd Cavalry Division 22nd Corps at Gaza 3rd Division 3,698 rifles 7th Division 2,886 rifles 53rd Division, 3,100 rifles. 26th Division, 2,901 rifles. 27th Division, 2,408 rifles, 76% Arab. 12th Depot Regiment, 2,336 rifles, 97% Arab. 136th Regiment, 1,011 rifles. The total infantry rifle strengths. For the 12 units on 30 September was 28,067 plus the 19th Division's 4,000 giving a total of 32,067 rifles supported by 268 guns. The 2 3rd Cavalry Division regiments in the area had 1,400 sabers, while the 3rd Regiment of the division was deployed east of the Jordan River. These rifle figures at 30 September overlook the 25% of rifles of each infantry battalion, which were progressively replaced with machine guns, beginning on 10 August 1917. By mid-September 1917 the Ottoman army had decided against the attempt to retake Baghdad. Enver Pasha took von Falkenhayn's advice to send the Yildirim Army Group to Palestine, to face the growing threat reported by Kress von Kressenstein. Enver Pasha issued orders on 26 September for the 4th Army headquarters to move to Damascus, at the same time dividing the area in half, leaving Semal Pasha with responsibility for Syria and Western Arabia. On 2 October, Enver Pasha activated the new 8th Army, commanded by Kress von Kressenstein, and deployed it along with the 7th Army, commanded by Mustafa Kemal, to the Yildirim Army Group, commanded by von Falkenhayn. However, in late September Mustafa Kemal disagreed with some of Enver Pasha's decisions and the new command structure. He advised adopting a defensive military policy, in response to the superior British lines of communications, which would ensure continued numerical superiority in any contested theatre. He thought this imbalance would make it impossible for the Yildirim Army Group to go on the offensive. He advised merging the 7th and the 8th Armies, offering to step down in favor of Kress von Kressenstein. Several weeks later Mustafa Kemal resigned and Fevzi Pasa took command of the 7th Army which was still assembling near Aleppo. By October 1917 the headquarters of the 8th Army commanded by Kress von Karasenstein was at Hulekat to north of Huj. These massive reorganizations began to be implemented in October, but by the end of the month, only the headquarters of the 7th and 8th Armies were in position to take the field. On 1 October, the 8th Army consisted of 2,894 officers, 69,709 men, 29,116 rifles, 403 machine guns, 268 artillery pieces, and 27,575 animals. Between 10 and 28 October 1917, the 8th Army shifted three infantry divisions to reserve positions, although the defense of Beersheba remained the responsibility of the Ottoman Third Corps, consisting of the mainly Arab 27th Infantry Division, and the 2nd Infantry Regiment, minus its machine guns. With the two regiments of the 3rd Cavalry Division, on 28 October, orders were issued by von Falkenhayn's Yildirim Army Group headquarters, directing Kress von Kressenstein's 8th Army to assume responsibility for the western, or Gaza half, of the Ottoman front line, while Fevzi Pasa's 7th Army took responsibility for the eastern half including Beersheba. 
the 3rd Corps headquarters which commanded the 27th Infantry Division and the 3rd Cavalry Division was transferred from the 8th to the 7th Army. The 16th and 24th Infantry Divisions and the 19th Infantry Division on its way south were also assigned to the 7th Army. Both the 19th and 24th Divisions arrived before the battle began. Kress von Kressenstein later described the 27th Infantry Division defending Beersheba, as badly trained, badly organized, and composed of Arabs who had to be watched. He recommended the division be deactivated and its soldiers deployed elsewhere as reinforcements. He suggested the 19th Infantry Division, Mustafa Kemal's famous Gallipoli Division, replace it at Beersheba. Regarded by the Ottoman general staff as the most powerful infantry division in the Ottoman army's order of battle, the 19th Division which had also served in Galicia, had an unusually powerful artillery component. The commander of the Yildirim Army Group, von Falkenhayn, ordered the 19th Infantry Division moved into reserve near Simame, Gemame, nearer to Gaza than Beersheba. By 31 October, nine Ottoman infantry divisions and one cavalry division with a total strength of up to 45,000 rifles, 1,500 sabres and 300 guns defended the Gaza to Beersheba line. Gaza was defended by the 8th Army's 22nd Corps, with its 20th Corps defending Sharia, while the 7th Army's 3rd Corps defended Beersheba. The recently arrived commander of the 7th Army, Fevzi Pasha, played no active role in command during the early stages of the Third Battle of Gaza and the entire front remained under Kress's control. Topic. Assault battalions. Each infantry division was reorganized into three infantry regiments, each consisting of three infantry battalions, and one assault battalion. The specialized assault or storm troop divisions of the German army were never formed by the Ottoman army. However, the assault battalions were established by order of Enver Pasha on 1 September 1917, during a general activation of Stotruppen-style assault troops, across the whole Ottoman army. The 15th Corps, the 1st Army and the 4th Army established the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Assault Battalions respectively. In addition, Enver Pasha ordered each infantry division in the Yildirim Army Group and in the 4th Army, to establish assault detachments consisting of the best officers, NCOs, and men from the best units in the division. These soldiers were required to be 27 years old or younger, intelligent, healthy and strong. Each assault unit was given a one-month assault course, better rations, and a badge embroidered with a hand grenade. Topic. Aircraft During October, 56 aircraft in nose. 301, 302, 303 and 304 squadrons of the German Flying Corps, arrived in Palestine from Germany. At the time No. 14 Ottoman squadrons AEG. Two seaters, were stationed at Kutrani. Topic. Characteristics It has also been claimed that after Russia's collapse in 1917, that reinforcements needed in Palestine were sent to the Caucasus, leaving the Ottoman army low in morale. In describing the situation, Hughes writes that, Many had received no mail from home in years. The hapless Turkish recruits awaited the EEF assault in fragile tents with nothing to cheer their spirits. This was because, The condition of the Ottoman railway system was such that the Turks had difficulty maintaining any substantial force in Palestine either for defensive or offensive operations. Based on a single track for 1,275 miles, with sections of standard and narrow gauge, the Ottoman lines of communication have been described as appalling. The Ottoman army in Palestine in 1917 continued to demonstrate most of the characteristics they had during the first two years of war. 
the Army was operationally and tactically aggressive, executing both defensive and offensive operations and training continuously in realistic, up-to-date methods at troop level and in centralized settings. According to Ericsson, D.I. visions were task-organized for a variety of specific tactical missions. The commanders were experienced, highly trained and capable leaders who continued to function well in its third year of a multi-front total war. However, it has also been claimed that the Ottoman front-line infantry battalions were operating at about half strength. The 21st Infantry Regiment on 26 October, according to the Turkish General Staff Archives was claimed to be at half strength in trained men, and reinforcements were failing to keep up with sick and battle casualties. Their last battle had been a decisive victory seven months previous, in April, from behind strong fortifications. Captain Hussein Husnu Amir, Assistant Chief of Staff of the Yildirim Army Group, claimed the 16th Division which had 200 officers, 400 NCOs and 10,900 men in September 1916, had been reduced to only 5,017 officers and men by 15 October 1917. Then the three infantry battalions in its 78th Infantry Regiment numbered about 400 men each out of an authorization of about 750 men per battalion." He also claimed that every division in the Gaza defences was below strength by 50%, but there is no mention of the establishment of assault battalions. In addition, chronic failures due to casualties and manpower shortages, were reported as being compounded by terrible attrition from disease and desertion." On 3 August 1917, the Yildirim Army Group reported, "...a deficit of some 70,000 soldiers," and that even the proposed reinforcements would leave them 40,000 short. According to Hussein Husni's Yildirim, in September 1917 Mustafa Kemal, the commander of the 7th Army in Palestine, reported to Enver Pasha that 50% of the arriving 54th Division were either too young or old, no source a battalion of one of the best divisions left Istanbul 1,000 strong, only to arrive at Aleppo with 500 men. Note 76 Hussein Husni, Yildirim, Part 1, Chapter 4 also Appendix 16. According to Massey, rations and leadership amongst the divisions facing the British Empire troops were also poor, writing, If the Ottoman army had been well led and properly rationed, the Ottoman 3rd, 7th, 16th, 19th, 20th, 24th, 26th, 27th, 53rd, and 54th Divisions and the 3rd Cavalry Division, should have been able to resist more strongly. Gaza-Beersheba Line After April, the defences at Gaza had been strengthened. Many of the houses were built on a ridge, each with its own garden surrounded by high cactus hedges, enclosing an area at least 1 mile deep. Along with this formidable area the 12,000 yards meters of trenching west of the town needed to be attacked by infantry as Allenby did not have enough artillery to do the job. Both Sharia and Beersheba were particularly strongly fortified by the Ottoman force. Permanent strongly entrenched and wired positions were constructed from the sea at Gaza to Shellal on the Wadi Gaza, defended by infantry. An Ottoman appreciation stated that due to lack of water any attack on Beersheba could only be made by one cavalry and one infantry division. The well-sighted Ottoman defences relied on entrenched Ottoman soldiers ready to take every opportunity to counterattack. Both Gaza and Beersheba were virtually ringed by fortifications. 
An attack was expected by the EEF and the Ottoman army knew about EEF preparations for an attack. The strength of the Yildirim army group units holding the Gaza to Beersheba line was estimated at 40,000 rifles, although the figure was later found to be closer to 33,000 rifles, 1,400 sabers and 260 guns, including the reserve 19th Division at Iraq el Menchie, and the 12th Depot Regiment at Hebron. While both Sharia and Beersheba were particularly strongly fortified by the Ottoman defenders, there were permanent strongly entrenched and wired positions stretching from the sea at Gaza to Shellal on the Wadi Gaza. On 31 October, the defenders of the Gaza to Beersheba line had been increased to nine divisions and one cavalry division. The Yildirim Army Group's pre-battle deployment saw the Gaza-Beersheba line held by two field armies, abreast. On the right, the 8th Army with headquarters at Hulaykat north of Huj deployed. 22nd Corps commanded by Rifet Bey with headquarters at Jabali holding the strongly fortified positions around Gaza with the 3rd, 53rd Divisions. 20th Corps commanded by Ali Fuad Bey with headquarters at Huj held Sharia with the 16th, 26th, 54th Divisions, holding the line eastwards with the 26th and 54th Divisions. Army Reserve at Deir Snai the 7th Division and the 19th Division, which was either at Iraq el Menchie 25 miles 40 km north of Beersheba and 19 miles 31 km northeast of Gaza, or at an assembly area 20 km 12 miles behind the front, Gaza had been developed into a strong fortress, heavily entrenched and wired. Stretching from the Mediterranean Sea on either side of Gaza a series of strong groups of positions at Sahan, Adawina, Abu Harara Arab El Tia and Beersheba, ran eastwards for 30 miles 48 kilometers to a point south of Sharia. Extending across the railway, these groups of defensive positions had every advantage of observation over the long bare slopes which an attacker must cross. Beyond these main positions there was a gap of about 8 miles 13 kilometers to the defences at Beersheba where the desert country minimised the threat of an EEF attack. However strong defences had been developed to the west and southwest of Beersheba with a garrison from the 7th Army of 5,000 protecting its important wells, supported by a number of high entrenched hills around Beersheba. The 7th Army on the left, commanded by Fevzi Pasha was deployed, 3rd Corps at Kalwaka or in 20th Corps Reserve near K.H. Jamame east of Huj 24th Division at Beersheba 27th, 16th Divisions, 3rd Cavalry Division also at Beersheba. Beersheba was defended by the Ottoman 27th Division, reinforced by battalions from the 16th and 24th Divisions. Here, the fortifications consisted of two lines of defensive positions. The outer line circled the town from the Gaza to Beersheba road where the line passed through the high ground to the northwest of Beersheba before continuing to the west and southwest of Beersheba, to Ras Ghanim. Situated on average about 7,000 yards 6, meters from Beersheba, this semi-circle of defenses was heavily entrenched and wired. To the northeast, east and southeast the outer line of defences consisted of a series redoubts or strong posts on the high ground at Telephone El Sakati and Telephone El Saba, along with two stone block houses defending the north bank of the Wadi Saba. The second inner line of defences completely encircled Beersheba the town itself, crossing the Wadi Saba just to the south of the railway bridge. Before the battle, Kress von Kressenstein recommended that the wells at Beersheba be destroyed and the garrison withdrawn to the hills north of the town, because he considered there were not enough troops to successfully defend Beersheba. He argued that from the hills to the north, the Beersheba garrison could attack the flank of any EEF units moving against Herrera and Sharia, but von Falkenhayn rejected this advice. Topic. Attacking force The EEF had been reorganized and strengthened during the stalemate in southern Palestine to overcome the strongly reinforced and entrenched Ottoman forces holding the Gaza to Beersheba line. Allenby was directed by the war cabinet to 
strike the Turks as hard as possible, and defeat hostile forces wherever they opposed the EEF. He was to commence the offensive as early as possible in September. Before the Ottoman army could redeploy their forces after the withdrawal of Russia from the war, Robertson assured Allenby was assured that everything possible was being done to bring the EEF back to full strength and fully supplied with munitions. However, there was no prospect at present of being able to send you the further reinforcements required for operations beyond the line Jaffa-Jerusalem. By this time the EEF was competing for finite British resources, which were being restricted by the very successful German submarine attacks which destroyed British ships and supplies, with the Third Battle of Ypres which had commenced on 31 July. However, more artillery was in transit, and the doubling of the railway had been authorized on 21 July. The fighting strength of the EEF was 100,189. Desert Mounted Corps 745 officers, 17,935 other ranks in the Anzac, Australian and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions. 20th Corps 1,435 officers, 44,171 other ranks in the 10th, 53rd, 60th and 74th Divisions. 21st Corps 1,154 officers, 34,759 other ranks in the 52nd, 54th and 75th Divisions. The force consisted of 20th Corps Lieutenant General Sir R. W. Chetwode, Bart. 10th Irish Division Major General J R Longley 29th Brigade 30th Brigade 31st Brigade 53rd Welsh Division Major General S F Mott 158th North Wales Brigade 159th Cheshire Brigade 160th Welsh Border Brigade 60th Two Halves N D London Division Major General J S M Shea 179th Two Quarters London Brigade 180th Two Fifths London Brigade 181st Two Sixths London Brigade 74th Yeomanry Division Major General E S Girdwood 229th Brigade 230th Brigade 231st Brigade Corps Cavalry Regiment 1 half N.D. County of London Yeomanry Corps Artillery 96th Heavy Artillery Group 11 Corps Lieutenant General Sir E.S. Bulfin 52nd Lowland Division Major General J. Hill 155th South Scottish Brigade 156th Scottish Rifles Brigade 157th Highland Light Infantry Brigade 54th East Anglian Division Major General S W Hare 161st Essex Brigade 162nd East Midland Brigade 163rd Norfolk and Suffolk Brigade 75th Division Major General P. C. Palin 232nd Brigade 233rd Brigade 234th Brigade Corps Cavalry Regiment, Composite Yeomanry REGT Corps Artillery 97th, 100th, 102nd Heavy Artillery Groups 20th Indian Brigade, Brigadier General H. D. Watson, Desert Mounted Corps, Lieutenant General Sir H. Shovel, Anzac Mounted Division, Major General E. W. C. Chater, 1st Light Horse Brigade, Brigadier General C. F. Cox, 2nd Light Horse Brigade, Brigadier General G. D. L. Ryrie, New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade, Brigadier General W. Meldrum 18 Brigade Raw, Inverness Shire, Ayrshire and Somerset Batteries of 13-pounder guns and Divisional Ammunition Column Australian Mounted Division, Major General Henry W. Hodgson 3rd Light Horse Brigade, Brigadier General L. C. Wilson 
4th Light Horse Brigade, Brigadier General W. Grant. 5th Mounted Brigade Brigadier Generals Percy Desmond Fitzgerald P J V Kelly 19 Brigade RA 1 A and 1 B Batteries Hack and 1 over 1 of a Stone Nottinghamshire RA of 13 pounder guns and divisional ammunition column Yeomanry Mounted Division Major General G D S Barrow 6th Mounted Brigade Brigadier General C A C Godwin 8th Mounted Brigade, Brigadier General C. S. Rome. 22nd Mounted Brigade, Brigadier General P. D. Fitzgerald. 20 Brigade RA, Berkshire, Hampshire and Leicestershire Batteries of 13-pounder guns and divisional ammunition column. Corps Reserve. 7th Mounted Brigade, Brigadier General J. T. Wigan. Essex Battery RA and Brigade Ammunition Column. Imperial Camel Corps Brigade, Brigadier General C. L. Smith Hong Kong and Singapore Camel Battery RGA. The artillery of Desert Mounted Corps was downgraded in mid-September from 18-pounder to 13-pounder guns, which Ericsson characterized as becoming even more capable. General Headquarters Troops Army Cavalry Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade Major Temp. Brigadier General M. H. Henderson Kadiwar Signal Troop 124th Indian Cavalry Field Ambulance The 21 Corps Composite Force of Almost a Division, consisting of the 25th Indian Infantry Brigade, a West Indian Battalion, the French Détachement Français de Palestine and the Italian Destacamento Italiano di Palestina, was camped east of the 75th Division in the region of Sheikh Abbas, Altogether, the EEF comprised 200,000 men, including Arab workers, 46,000 horses, 20,000 camels, more than 15,000 mules and donkeys, and hundreds of artillery pieces. The official rifle strength of the EEF on the 28th of October 1917 was 80,000 in the infantry divisions and the Imperial Camel Brigade, and 15,000 cavalry, including the mounted rifles and mounted infantry brigades. However the actual strength was about 60,000 and 12,000 respectively. This represented a comparable ratio of 2 to 1 infantry, 8 to 1 cavalry and about 3 to 2 guns. Most of Allenby's infantry were territorial divisions, mobilized at the outbreak of the war with most, if not all the battalions having some regular army officers and NCOs. A number of the divisions had fought against the Ottoman army, during the Gallipoli campaign. The 52nd Lowland Division at Cape Hellas, while the 53rd Welsh Division and the 54th East Anglian Division fought at Suvla Bay, while the 60th 2nd, 2nd London Division had fought on the Western Front and at Salonika. The 74th Yeomanry Division recently formed from was 18 under strength Yeomanry regiments had all fought dismounted at Gallipoli. The 10th Irish Division, a new army K1 division had also fought at Suvla Bay and at Salonika. All three of the brigades of the Anzac Mounted Division and the two light horse brigades of the Australian Mounted Division had fought the Ottoman army on Gallipoli. Allenby agreed that he would take the offensive as soon as arrangements were complete and he had seven infantry divisions ready for action. During October Allenby was waiting for reinforcements from England. On 17 October Allenby wrote to Robertson that the 75th Division was complete but the 10th Irish Division had about 3,000 cases of fever and lacked its b. echelon of its divisional ammunition column. He was hopeful that the Irish Division would be complete and able to field between 8,000 and 9,000 rifles. On the day. Quote, in addition Allenby had been in close touch with the naval captains, while waiting for reinforcements, to ensure they had personally reconnoitred their sea and land so they know exactly what to do. Aircraft <inaudible> 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 
The Army wing aircraft were assigned to carry out strategic reconnaissances, to report on Ottoman reserves well behind their lines, and carry out photography duties and air raids. Army Fighter Squadron was to provide protection from hostile air attack, while the Army Bombing Squadron was prepared to conduct bombing air raids. The core squadrons of aircraft attached to the two infantry corps, carried out artillery and contact patrols, along with tactical reconnaissance. Photography of the opposition's trenches was normally carried out daily by the Army Wing. One flight of aircraft attached to 20th Corps, was responsible for carrying out artillery and contact patrols and tactical reconnaissances for Desert Mounted Corps, as well as the arrival of British troops, all types of war material along with heavy guns, motor transport, up-to-date fast aircraft replaced the slow aircraft, which had been outpaced by the German Fokker and Albatross Scout aircraft. The first of the new RE-8s arrived at No. 1 Squadron on 17 October along with new Martinsides, fitted with a 160 HP engine instead of the old 120 HP engines. As a result, control of the air gradually moved to the EEF from the Ottoman Army, which had held it since the Sinai Campaign. New Bristol fighter aircraft arrived in 1s and 2s to establish No. 111 Squadron RFC which was shortly followed by No. 113 Squadron RFC, which took over core operations, and to relieve No. 1 Squadron of some trench reconnaissances, as it in turn became a specialist bombing squadron. New pilots and observers from the training school, reported to the squadrons and in August, No. 1 Squadron was authorized by AIF Headquarters, to hold a reserve of 50% of flying officers above establishment. The full value of this provision not become fully utilized until the Air War of 1918. Topic. Sheriffiel forces. Allenby was hopeful that Lawrence and the Sheriffiel Arab Force could support a September attack, recognizing that they were involved with harvests before September, but must get going before the end of September, prior to their normal move to camel grazing lands in the Syrian desert. They, naturally, won't and can't do much unless I move, and it is not much use their destroying the Turks' communications unless I take immediate advantage of such destruction. If I bring them into the fight and do not make progress myself, this will also expose them to retaliation, which to some tribes, such as the Druzes, s of Damascus, may mean annihilation. The Arab rebellion is spreading well, and the Turkish communications will be difficult to guard against their raids. The enclosed photograph of the Sharif of Mecca, and the proclamation by him, is one of the means we have of inducing the Arabs to desert the Turks. We drop these papers and packets of cigarettes over the Turkish lines from aeroplanes. The proclamation is an appeal from the Sharif to the Arabs to leave the Turks and join in the war against them for the freedom and independence of Arabia. A good many come in, as a result of our propaganda. Topic. Supplies Allenby's strategic plans for the capture of the Beersheba Line and the eventual capture of Jerusalem, required the complete determination of the commander, and efficient supply lines to support the mobility of his force. The offensive relied completely on efficient lines of communication. In order for two divisions to cross the arid country to attack Beersheba, elaborate arrangement for the supply of water, food and ammunition were necessary. Indeed the absence of water dictated that the attack had to be decisive, otherwise the mounted divisions would be forced to withdraw to water. However, a series reconnaissances and work by field engineers in the apparently waterless desert, based on intelligence produced sufficient water, to the west of Beersheba for the horses, and the horses circling to the south in a wide arch. Records of the Palestine Exploration Society revealed that Colossa had been the site of the Greek city of Eleusa, 13 miles 21 kilometers southwest of Beersheba and that a sludge had been a large town, 16 miles 26 kilometers south of Beersheba. 
The likelihood of finding water at these two places was investigated by the commander of the Royal Engineers, Desert Mounted Corps and confirmed during discussions with the inhabitants of the area. Plans were made to develop these water sources. A 48-hour reconnaissance from Telephone El Fara was carried out from 23 to 25 September to survey the roads and water in the Esani and Kalasa areas. During the night of 2021 October units of the 20th Corps were sent forward to form supply dumps and to store water at Esani while Desert Mounted Corps engineers developed water at Kalasa and a sludge which had previously been reconnoitered by them. The standard gauge line to Amara was completed and the station opened on 28 October. The railway line was extended to a point point seven five miles 1.21 km north-northeast of Karm and a station opened there on 3 November. The light railway from the east bank of the Wadi Gaza at Gamli via Karm to Kasif was completed on 30 October. Between the 22nd of October and the 1st of November water at Minder to Shikahilin was developed by the 21st Corps, at Esani, Amara, Karm and Kasif by the 20th Corps and at Abu Ghalian, Malaga, Kalasa and Asludge by Desert Mounted Corps. Cisterns in the Kasif and Imsiri area were filled with 60,000 gallons of water for the 53rd and 74th Divisions, to be supplemented by Camel Convoys. After the 2nd Light Horse Brigade moved to Bir el Esani and the ICCB to Abu Ghalian, the work continued night and day on the development of water. These two brigades were supported by the field squadrons of the Anzac and Australian Mounted Divisions. Allenby personally inspected the watering points at Shellal Works and watched the engineers cleaning out the wells at Kalasa and a sludge. His surprise arrival and keen interest gave those carrying out the difficult, dirty work a sense of the importance Allenby attached to their work. Regarding the importance of water, historian Matthew Hughes wrote, W. Ader was the determining factor in the success or otherwise of Allenby's plan at the Third Battle of Gaza. Allenby acknowledged the problem on 21 August, saying, T. He wells will probably be blown. He believed that there would be some water in the Wadi S. Saba and Wadi El Imala, but he was uncertain of the amount, acknowledging that it was the driest time of the year. Fortunately for the British plan, though, thunderstorms on 25 October had left pools of water over a wide area. While all possible steps were taken to ensure full and regular supplies, Allenby's administrative instructions included the following caveat, T. HESE calculations are based on the scale of full mobile rations. It may be necessary to double all distances and to place the force on half rations. Nevertheless, Hughes notes that, without the water at Beersheba the cavalry was reliant on the rail terminals at Karm or even Rafa. <laughs> Topic. 20th and 21st Corps transport There was not enough transport to keep both the XX and the 21st Corps in the field at the same time. As a result, most of the lorries, tractors accepting ammunition tractors, and camels of the 21st Corps holding the Gaza sector, were withdrawn and transferred to strengthen XX Corps' supply in the Beersheba sector. Striking flank. The movement of the 21st Corps transport to Shellal and Karm, along with the extension of the railway to Karm, was delayed until the last moment, to avoid drawing attention to that section of the front line. Meanwhile, dumps of rations, ammunition and engineer stores were formed in the 21st Corps area in concealed positions. Topic: The 31st of October to the 7th of November. Topic: Capture of the Gaza Beersheba line. Force Order No. 54 by Allenby states on the 22nd of October that it was his intention to take the offensive at Beersheba and Gaza, then make an enveloping attack towards Herrera and Sharia. 
Allenby turned the Turks out of their defensive positions. The Gaza Beersheba line was completely overrun, and 12,000 Ottoman soldiers were captured or surrendered. The subsequent advance would take the EEF to Jerusalem on 9 December. Allenby describes the capture of Beersheba in his report written on in the evening after the battle. We completed our movements for attack on Beersheba in accordance with plan by dawn today. Advanced works southwest of Beersheba were captured by 20th Corps by 0840. This corps reached all its objectives by 1305 and held whole of central sector of defenses between south and west of Beersheba. Meanwhile Desert Mounted which moved round to east and north of town, captured Telephone El Saba by 1600 and cleared Hebron Road as far as Bir Es Sakati. Desert Mounted Corps, meeting considerable opposition sick, was within three quarters of a mile of town on northeast at 1630. 20th Corps was attacking works on left of its original objectives still held by Turks. We had now isolated enemy in works between 20th Corps objectives and Desert Mounted Corps. Neither prisoners nor booty yet collected but up to 1600 some 250 prisoners had been counted and some machine guns taken. Bombardment of Gaza defenses has been continued by 21st Corps. Large explosions were caused at Deir Siniad and also at Sheikh Hassan by naval gun fire. Later, Beersheba occupied. Some field guns besides further prisoners included in captures. Although the Ottoman defenders suffered many casualties at Beersheba, stubborn fighting continued against strong Ottoman rearguards, which delayed an EEF breakthrough for seven days. The continuation of the offensive so far from base depended on efficiently supplying the attacking force. The Australian Mounted Division was supplied by their divisional train which brought supplies to them at Beersheba on 2 November. On 31 October the Australian Mounted Divisional Train moved back from Essani to Gamli, where they loaded supplies before heading out for Reshid Bek where they arrived at 1700 on 1 November. Departing at 9.30 on 2 November, they moved along the long dusty Wadi Salia towards Beersheba via Hill 1070. The divisional train halted for a meal and rest when the animals were fed, before continuing on to arrive at Beersheba and Bivouac at 20.00. At 8 o'clock on 3 November, they began offloading the supplies. Topic. Medical situation The ambulance stretcher bearers following closely behind the regiments collected the wounded where they fell. The first divisional collecting station was formed by mobile sections at Kazim Zana, some 3 miles kilometers east of Beersheba at 12.30. When this was full, at 1900 second was formed nearer Beersheba. The 165 wounded from the Anzac and Australian Mounted Divisions were retained overnight. These wounded were transferred to the Ottoman Hospital in Beersheba which was taken over after the operating unit and the Australian Mounted Division receiving station arrived at 7 o'clock on 1 November. The Anzac Mounted Division receiving station and convoy cars in reserve, arrived at 11 o'clock when evacuation was to Amara by motor ambulance convoy and light Ford motor ambulance wagons began. On 2 November the 20th Corps took over the Ottoman Hospital when the Australian Mounted Division receiving station, transferred to the town hall where wounded from the fighting in the hills north of the city started to arrive. Topic. Southern Judean Hills towards Hebron For a week, the Ottoman defenders continued to hold most of the old Gaza to Beersheba line after the capture of Beersheba, including Sharia, and Gaza along with Tank and Adawina redoubts. It was not water so much as strong defense and cool action under fire by the enemy which held its line for seven days after the fall of Beersheba which allowed its army to retire in an orderly fashion. However recent histories have remained focused on the issue of water. 
Water was the determining factor in the success or otherwise of Allenby's plan at the Third Battle of Gaza. Indeed, the return of the Australian Mounted Division to water at Karm has been described as negating the whole purpose of the flanking operation. The attempt to cut off the enemy forces had failed. Due to delays caused by water difficulties, after the loss of Beersheba, the Ottoman defenders withdrew north northwest towards Telephone Esh Sharia and northwards towards Telephone El Kuwailf. Those who retired northward were to defend the 7th Army headquarters at Hebron and the road north to Jerusalem less than 50 miles 80 kilometers away. Here a considerable Ottoman force, including all available reserve units, were deployed in the Telephone El Kuwailfe area to face strong attacks by the Anzac Mounted Division. These attacks which began the day after Beersheba was captured, were strongly resisted during the Battle of Telephone El Kuwailf by the Ottoman defenders who feared a major cavalry attack. Topic. Mediterranean coast During the Third Battle of Gaza, several attacks were made by the 21st Corps by the 52nd Lowland, the 54th East Anglian and the 75th Divisions. The main purpose of these operations was to keep the Ottoman garrison of 8,000 riflemen supported by 116 guns in place. The 21st Corps launched an attack at 2300 during the night of 1 half November towards Umbrella Hill. The second attack a few hours later at 3 o'clock was launched towards the El Arish Redoubt. These attacks, which concentrated on a 2 miles .2 kilometers long section of the defences between Umbrella Hill and the coast, aimed to capture three groups of trench complexes or redoubts, called El Arish, Rafa, and Cricket by the EEF. These fortifications were strongly connected by a series of trench lines several layers thick, and backed by other trenches and strong points. During these attacks, which were never intended to capture Gaza, just the first line of Ottoman trenches, the 21st Corps utilized new infantry tactics, and were supported by tanks and a large quantity of artillery, organized according to a Western Front style of deployment. Topic. In the center The main flank attack on the Ottoman front line stretching from Gaza, was made on 6 November by the EEF in the center at Herrera and Sharia, and a gap was created for the Desert Mounted Corps to advance to capture HUJ on their way to the Mediterranean coast, however, there were less than 8,000 horsemen available out of the 17,000 in Desert Mounted Corps. Only three light horse and one mounted brigades were immediately available on 7 November to participate in the breakthrough. They were the 1st and the 2nd Light Horse Brigades Anzac Mounted Division, the 4th Light Horse and the 5th Mounted Brigades while the 3rd Light Horse Brigade Australian Mounted Division, waited to be relieved from outpost work connecting the XX and the 21st Corps. Desert Mounted Corps' strength had been cut by one-third by the decision to leave the Yeomanry Mounted Division, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, and the 11th and the 12th Light Armoured Car Batteries in the Judean Hills supporting the 53rd Welsh Division attacks at Telephone El Kuwailf. The Anzac Mounted Division was also less two squadrons and machine guns, and most of the division's field squadron Australian engineers which were still working to improve the amount of water flowing from the Beersheba wells. By 9 o'clock the Australian Mounted Division less one brigade was to connect at KH. Budiha with the Anzac Mounted Division which was steadily pushing back Ottoman posts to gain space for manoeuvre. However, the Australian Mounted Division was not in a position to advance until after dark, because of delays in the capture of Telephone Esh Sharia. After participating in the unsuccessful charge, the horses of the 11th Light Horse Regiment were watered at 6 o'clock at the Sharia Water Tower on 8 November, where the regiment was issued with rations and forage from their B-1 Echelon Special Emergency Rations. 
At 7.30 the 4th Light Horse Brigade informed the regiment that the brigade was moving at 9 o'clock in a northerly direction up the Wadi Suda. The 4th Light Horse Brigade concentrated 0.5 miles .80 kilometers south of Telephone El Sharia and the 12th Light Horse Regiment moved off with the brigade northwards. Ottoman columns were reported retreating northwards from Atawina towards Huj and Beit Hanan at midnight 7 8 November. Meanwhile, the opposing forces fighting for the Kuwailfe Ridge continued their long drawn out struggle on 7 November without much change. Towards the evening the Ottoman forces began to withdraw, to conform with a general retirement along the length of the whole Ottoman defensive line, including Gaza and Sharia. At Gaza, a series of EEF infantry attacks during the night of 6 November were not strongly resisted and when a general advance occurred during the morning of 7 November the town was found to have been abandoned. The town which had a population of 40,000 people before the war, was completely deserted. By that evening, although not many prisoners had been captured, the enemy had been ejected from strong positions, which had been held successfully against the EEF for eight months. Topic. Ottoman withdrawal The Ottoman 22nd Corps was not defeated, but had skillfully conducted a tactical retreat from Gaza, demonstrating both operational and tactical mobility. Nor did the Yildirim Army Group attempt a strong counterattack. The 7th Army commanded by Mustafa Kemal and the 8th Army commanded by Kress von Kressenstein were instead ordered to conduct a fighting withdrawal with the Ottoman 3rd Cavalry Division screening the left flank of the 7th Army. While the headquarters of Yildirim Army Group retired back to Jerusalem the headquarters of the 7th Army retired back from Hebron to Bethlehem. A new defensive line 10 miles 16 kilometers north of Gaza had begun to be established, before disengaging their forces to withdraw during the night. Numerous rearguards covered the disengagement when many Ottoman troops died or were captured defending these rearguards. Under pressure from the main EEF advance in the center and along the coast towards the 8th Army, Kress von Kressenstein had great difficulty maintaining control and cohesion. By 9 November the 8th Army had retreated 20 miles 32 kilometers, while the 7th Army had lost hardly any ground. Topic. Rear guards Although they had been retiring during the two previous nights, they strongly resisted, fighting the EEF mounted divisions on the intervening day. Rear guards formed by groups ranging in size from a company to several regiments, occupied every tell or other commanding ground to establish a strong rearguard position, from which they fought tenaciously. Many Ottoman troops died or were captured defending their rearguards, but the sacrifice of the Ottoman rearguards delayed the EEF advance and saved the 8th Army from encirclement and destruction. After they evacuated Gaza, the Ottoman 53rd Division was ordered to advance across the front, past Huj to stop Desert Mounted Corps breakout. They attacked leading squadrons of the 2nd Light Horse Brigade which were driven in, before attacking the 7th Mounted Brigade on their left, which stopped the advance. However when threatened by the 1st Light Horse Brigade on the right, the 53rd Division withdrew to the Wadi Hesi, but the delay to the mounted advance allowed the 16th and 26th Divisions to escape capture. By the evening the Anzac Mounted Division reached Telephone Abu Dalak, the Australian Mounted Division on their left with the 60th London Division on their left. The breakthrough was only partial as strong well-organized counterattacks blocked the mounted divisions at Telephone Abu Dalak, north of Telephone Esh Sharia and on the Wadi El Hesi line enabling the rearguards from the Atawina, Tank and Beer defenses to withdrawal. This disciplined withdrawal succeeded in preventing a rout, but the Ottoman defenses were now only rudimentary and could not stop Desert Mounted Corps for long. Two factors influenced the speed of the EEF advance, the frequent counterattacks and water. It was known that water was available at Bir Jamame, at Telephone El Gijail and Huj. 
however only part of the Desert Mounted Corps was armed for mounted attack. But the fact that only two of the six brigades available were armed with the sword undoubtedly affected their tactics and pace in dealing with the opposition of the Turkish rearguards. During 7 November, the Australian Mounted Division was delayed by strong Ottoman rearguards during the Battle of Herrera and Sharia near Sharia, while only two brigades of the Anzac Mounted Division were available to advance and threaten the Ottoman withdrawal, which continued unaffected. Shavel requested the return of the Yeomanry Mounted Division to the Desert Mounted Corps. Topic. Pursuit 7 to 16 November However, recent historians have overlooked the successful Allied campaign of maneuver which resulted in the capture of Jerusalem, claiming the Battle of Megiddo in September 1918, was the only successful Allied campaign of maneuver in the entire Great War. The pursuit was hampered by problems with watering horses, lack of supplies, both of which were exacerbated by a comson, the hot southerly wind that stirred up clouds of dust and sand. 100 motor lorries carrying full 1,800 litres 480 US gal water tanks shuttled between Beersheba and Karm 26 kilometres 16 miles away. Insufficient water and the frequent counter-attacks, which were most often directed against the right of the advancing mounted corps from the foothills of the Judean Hills, were the two major factors which slowed the pursuit. All bustle and hustle with the military. Natives rounded up with their donkeys and camels, carrying stone jars of water in slings. Military police on horseback at work on the populace. Red Cross cars parked after their activity. Armored cars cleaning their guns. Transport and mounds fodder. Aeroplanes flying low over the place. Wrecked pumping station. Cavalry details passing. Topic: The 7th of November. The Anzac Mounted Division less the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade still attached to Barrow's detachment with the 53rd Welsh Division near Kuwail received orders to advance to a meet it on 7 November. They pushed through a gap in the Ottoman defensive line at Kh. Um el Bakr. This gap had been created when the defenders closed up towards Telephone Esh Sharia and Telephone El Kuwail. They rode to Um El Amidit, 5 miles kilometers northwest of Telephone Esh Sharia Station on the Beersheba to Junction Station Railway without being opposed for the first couple of miles. As the lead brigade, the 1st Light Horse Brigade moved in open formation over the plain they were shelled by Ottoman artillery from the west and northwest. As the 1st Light Horse Brigade approached the station at 11 o'clock, the leading regiment were fired on. Instead of dismounting to the attack, they charged into the place which was captured after a sharp fight, along with large supply and ammunition depots. At immediate they captured 396 prisoners and 27 trucks loaded with ammunition, ordnance stores including arms and saddlery. From their position 10 miles 16 kilometers behind the old Ottoman front line the Anzac Mounted Division was shelled from the Judean Hills on their right and the Ottoman heavy guns firing from Sharia and Adawina redoubts on the left. These Ottoman guns also fired on the 20th and 21st Corps covering the country in shrapnel, smoke and dust. At noon patrols from the Anzac Mounted Division rode out from immediate north towards Telephone in Nejil 4 miles 6.4 kilometers away on the railway, and northwest towards Kh. Jamame on the Wadi Jamame also 4 miles 6.4 kilometers away. Half an hour later they were informed that Gaza had fallen and the division was urged to attempt to cut off the retreat of the Gaza garrison by advancing to Kh. Jamame although the center of the line around Herrera and Adawina was still held by Ottoman rearguards. 
Both patrols were stopped by Ottoman rearguards, a very strong one was located on the telephone Abu Dalak halfway to Kh. Jamame. Although the 2nd Light Horse Brigade rode forward to support the 1st Light Horse Brigade's attack on the telephone at 1500, and the combined force of the two brigades pushed the defenders back off the hill, the rearguard took up another strong position a short distance to the north. Although there was no water available, the Anzac Mounted Division bivouacked near Amidit holding a battle outpost line stretching from Abu Dalak to 2 miles .2 kilometers east of the railway. During the night scouts from the 3rd Light Horse Brigade after being relieved from the outpost line connecting the XX with the 21st Corps found touch with the Anzac Mounted Division near Abu Dalak, and the 7th Mounted Brigade was sent to reinforce the Anzac Mounted Division, as the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was still in the Telephone El Kuwailf area with the 53rd Welsh Division. Topic. 7 to 8 November Topic. Beit Hanan and Wadi el Hesi It has been claimed the 21st Corps had no cavalry to pursue the retreating Ottoman army up the coastal plain. However, the pursuit which eventually ended some 50 miles 80 kilometers north, began during the morning of 7 November when the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade advanced out of Gaza to reach Beit Hanan where they encountered part of the Gaza garrison defending a strong rearguard position on a ridge 1.5 miles kilometers southeast of Beit Hanan. While they succeeded in occupying a ridge west of Beit Hanan the village remained in Ottoman hands, until retiring behind the Wadi Hesi, 7 miles north-northeast of Gaza in the sand dunes and in the cultivated area. Yildirim Army Group had marched through the night, to gain distance and time to establish a light entrench line defending water sources. Here, they were attacked by the 157th Brigade 52nd Division, which had marched north from Gaza. However, the Ottoman forces succeeded in holding the Wadi all day, resisting the EEF advance strongly, until late on 8 November, the casualties suffered by the 20th Corps between 31 October and 7 November were, 932 killed, 4,444 wounded and 108 missing. During this period they captured 2,177 prisoners, 45 guns, 7 trench mortars and 50 machine guns. The 8th of November By the morning of 8 November, Ali Fuad's force was found north of Telephone El Sharia, operating independently of the 7th and 8th Armies. Patrols by the Composite Regiment Royal Glasgow Yeomanry, Duke of Lancaster Yeomanry 1 over 1 of a Stone Hertfordshire Yeomanry Squadrons at Sheikh Abbas, found the redoubts along the Gaza to Beersheba Road lightly held. Large sections of the Ottoman 26th and 54th Divisions had quietly retreated during the night of 7-8 November, while the EEF had been held up by the 53rd Division's machine gun screen. The Ottoman force withdrew through the narrowing gap between the EEF's mounted troops advancing on the coast and those inland. The rearguard trenches still held on the Gaza to Beersheba road, resulted in the 20th Corps and 21st Corps transport making long detours, to avoid fire. The 232nd Brigade with the South African Brigade Field Artillery, 495th Field Company Royal Engineers and two sections of a field ambulance managed to advance to Deer Snide during the day. Hodgson ordered the 3rd Light Horse and the 5th Mounted Brigades of the Australian Mounted Division to advance, with the 3rd Light Horse Brigades right on KH, El Kofka, and the 5th Mounted Brigades left on HUJ. Shavel, aware of the advance by troops of the 21st Corps along the coast ordered Hodgson at 1300 to send a regiment of the 4th Light Horse Brigade which had returned to his command earlier in the day, to make touch them. 
The 12th Light Horse Regiment rode 12 miles 19 kilometers in one and a half hours, across country to join up with the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade near Beit Hannon. And, late in the afternoon the Australian Mounted Division reached HUJ, where the Yeomanry Charge captured 30 prisoners, 11 field guns and 4 machine guns. Topic. HUJ The advance towards HUJ by the Australian Mounted Division, with the 60th London Division, resumed on 8 November, when another strong rearguard of artillery and machine guns was encountered. While suffering considerable shell fire, the 5th Mounted Brigade advanced on the left of the 60th London Division. During a personal reconnaissance by Major General Shea commanding the 60th London Division, he saw a straggling column of enemy moving from west to east some three miles kilometers ahead and a flank guard with artillery hastily taking up a position to the right front. He commanded the 5th Mounted Brigade to charge the Ottoman flank guard. A small contingent made a cavalry charge at HUJ with sabres. These 200 men from the 1 over 1 of a stone Warwickshire Yeomanry and the 1 over 1 of a stone Worcestershire Yeomanry suffered heavy casualties but managed to reach the guns and cut down the gunners. In doing so they destroyed the last of the Ottoman strength south of HUJ. However, no large groups of enemy soldiers were cut off. While the Australian Mounted Division captured HUJ, which had been the site of the headquarters of Kress von Kressenstein's 8th Army, the Anzac Mounted Division captured Wadi Jamame and the water supply. The 60th London Division reached the end of their lines of communication when they bivouacked about 1.5 miles east of HUJ. The division had marched 23.5 miles (37.8 kilometers) between 5:30 on the 6th of November and 16:30 on the 8th of November, capturing the Kawaka and Rushdie systems and the bridgehead at Sharia, stopping a determined counterattack and pushing Ottoman rearguards from three defensive positions. They captured two 5.9 howitzers, 10 field guns, 21 machine guns, two Lewis guns, and anti-aircraft guns. The 179th Brigade suffered 28 killed, 274 wounded and 2 missing, the 180th Brigade suffered 50 killed, 249 wounded and 6 missing, and the 181st Brigade suffered 35 killed, 207 and 10 missing. The divisional artillery suffered 11 killed and 44 wounded. Topic. 20th and 21st Corps transport problems Only one infantry division could be supplied and maintained at a distance of 20 to 25 miles 32 to 40 kilometers from railhead, with the camels and wheeled transport allotted to the EEF Infantry Corps. During the attack on Beersheba the transport of the 21st Corps had been assigned to supply the 20th Corps, which marched back to near railhead at Karm after the victory. Here minimal transport was needed so the transport was sent back to the 21st Corps. Many thousands of camels in long lines slowly converged on their allotted areas, before being loaded up for the advance. Motor lorries caked with dust, also drove westwards across the sand and powdered earth. The sleepless drivers' vehicles were then load up before driving off to supply their infantry units. The 60th London Division which could not be supplied north of HUJ, remained in that area while the transport of the two infantry corps were being reorganised. Desert Mounted Corps So it was only units of the 21st Corps on the coast advancing to attack the Ottoman rearguard defending the Wadi Hesse line, and six mounted brigades of Desert Mounted Corps inland which were available to pursue the Ottoman army. Urgently needing reinforcements, Shavel ordered the Yeomanry Mounted Division back to Desert Mounted Corps from Barrow's detachment in the Telephone El Kuwailf area on 8 November. 
The Dorset Yeomanry, 6th Mounted Brigade, Yeomanry Mounted Division, covered 60 miles, 97 kilometers in 54 hours. Many of the frequent counterattacks directed towards Desert Mounted Corps were against the right from the foothills of the Judean Hills held by the 7th Ottoman Army, a major Ottoman rearguard southwest of Nejil determined to keep the EEF pursuit away from the water for 24 hours. The pressure of the Anzac Mounted Division with the 7th Mounted Brigade attached, while the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade was detached from its division, eventually forced the rearguard to give way. However, the 1 over 1 of a Stone Sherwood Rangers and the 1 over 1 of a Stone South Knots Hussars 7th Mounted Brigade were vigorously counterattacked at Mudwai Way on the Anzac Mounted Division's right which they gallantly held off. The Anzac Mounted Division less the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade had ridden out at dawn towards Berere, about 12 miles 19 kilometers northeast of Gaza, with the 1st and 2nd Light Horse Brigades in line covering a front of about 6 miles 9.7 kilometers centered about Abu Dalak with the 7th Mounted Brigade in reserve on the right of the 2nd Light Horse Brigade. The 1st Light Horse Regiment First Light Horse Brigade advanced at 5.45 towards Tel en Nejil, while the 3rd Light Horse Regiment First Light Horse Brigade remained at Amidit to guard the right flank. The 5th and 7th Light Horse Regiments Second Light Horse Brigade, on the left advanced towards K.H. Jamame. The division rode across open, rolling, treeless, firm country dotted with prominent hills or telephones designed for cavalry with the Australian mounted on their left. In the process, the 2nd Light Horse Brigade captured two guns, which had held them up the evening before. From 9 o'clock long columns of retreating Yildirim Army Group units, with guns and transport, were seen moving northwards through K.H. L. Kofka towards Jamame. After watering their horses at the Wadi Sharia, the 7th Mounted Brigade, arrived at divisional headquarters at 9 o'clock and was immediately ordered to reinforce the 1st and 2nd Light Horse Brigades in the center. At 11 o'clock the 2nd Light Horse Brigade was counter-attacked strongly on the right of the Mounted Infantry Line, near Telephone El Nejil, and was held up while the 7th Mounted Brigade, in the center, continued to advance towards Bir El Jemame. By about 1300 they had nearly reached their objective, when they were heavily attacked by the Ottoman defenders covering the water supply, forcing the brigade back, and endangering its left flank. The 1st Light Horse Brigade came up on the western side of the 7th Mounted Brigade, and drove the Ottoman attackers back. The leading troops of 1st Light Horse Brigade, the 3rd Light Horse Regiment fought their way into Bir el Jemame, K.H. Jemame shortly after 1500. Here they captured the wells, cisterns and steam pumping plant intact, including the engineer in charge. While a regiment of the 1st Light Horse Brigade secured the high ground to the north overlooking Bir el Jemame protecting the area, the remainder of the brigade and the 7th Mounted Brigade, watered all their horses. Meanwhile, the 2nd Light Horse Brigade occupied Telephone El Nejil Station after dark, when the Ottoman 53rd Division's defenders had retired. Although some water was found here in the Wadi Hesi, it was not possible to water the horses of the outpost troops which established a night outpost line, protecting Nejil. The Anzac Mounted Division had captured the country from Nejil to the north bank of the Wadi Jamame, along with 300 prisoners and two guns. While the Australian Mounted Division advanced round the north side of HUJ, their 4th Light Horse Brigade in touch with the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade 21st Corps at Beit Hanan. During the day, their 3rd Light Horse Brigade captured prisoners and two Austrian 5.9 howitzers. By the evening of 8 November, all the Ottoman positions which had made up the Gaza Beersheba line had been captured and the enemy was in full retreat. During 8 November the EEF advanced 8 miles 13 kilometers to occupy a position due east of HUJ, which had been the army headquarters and military railway terminus of the coast line. EEF artillery was then able to get into position just before dark, to fire during the night on the main road leading north from HUJ. 
By the morning of 9 November, the road was littered with guns, limbers, ammunition wagons and transport of all descriptions, jumbled up into heaps with their teams shot. The battle is in full swing. My army is all over the place, now, on a front of 35 miles. I am at the center of telegraph and telephone lines, in my old headquarters. I have no idea, yet what our captures are, but they will be something big, when all is collected. I hear that some parts of the battlefield are carpeted with dead Turks. My flying men are having the time of their lives, bombing and machine gunning the retreating columns. All my staff wear happy expressions of countenance. I fancy that Kress von Kressenstein is nearing the Jaffa Jerusalem line, himself. I have many congratulatory telegrams, from the Sultan, the High Commissioner, etc., etc. and from General Maud, who has, himself, had another success, at Tekrit. I hear of 43 guns captured, so far, but I don't know, for certain. We ought to get a lot eventually. Historians have characterized the pursuit as a failed attempt to capture the withdrawing Ottoman forces. That the 21st Corps advance from Gaza and the Desert Mounted Corps advance from Telephone Esh Sharia were to form two jaws to cut off and capture the retreating Ottoman armies. During this period, some horses only had one good drink in four days, which had a serious effect on their condition. So only six of the eleven brigades of Desert Mounted Corps were available for the pursuit and having been short of water since leaving Kalasa, a sludge, Izni on 30 31 October their horses were far from fit. The unfit brigades were formed into a reserve corps and returned to areas where feed and water were available. When revived, they became available as reinforcements as the water situation north of Herrera and Sharia was sparsely populated with few very deep, low-yielding water wells. Yildirim Army Group's tactics took the geographic conditions into account. They knew that if the EEF was delayed more than 48 hours without water it the pursuit would have to stop so strong rearguards were established to allow their infantry to withdraw well ahead of the slower British infantry. The EEF forces persevered in spite of the long marches on very limited forage and water, to attack the Ottoman forces relentlessly. Topic. Maneuver warfare armaments The vast transformation of warfare by the machine gun was demonstrated during 8 November, as it was not the Ottoman artillery which interfered with the Anzac Mounted Division's advance, but machine guns which prevented them from breaking through to attack and capture the columns. The 8th of November also demonstrated the value of swords in mounted attack, directly during the attack at HUJ and indirectly when the swordless Australian light horse were compelled to make dismounted attacks, instead of attacking large retreating Ottoman columns. Before Allenby arrived, the British command had contemplated withdrawing the swords from the yeomanry regiments to lighten the burdens of their horses, on the ground that the Arme Blanche was little likely ever to be used. Topic. Air attacks and support Topic. No. 304 Bavarian Flying Squadron Yildirim Army Group suffered a serious loss of aircraft, stores and aerodromes during the retreat. In order to protect their air force, it was decided on 4 November during a conference with Felma commander of the German Air Force, that one of the new German squadrons based at Iraq El Menchie Aerodrome, should move north to a new aerodrome near Junction Station. This move was delayed for three days, owing to urgent need of pilots. But by 7 November, when the move was finally ordered, transport was not available. A staff officer of the Ottoman 8th Army arrived at 1800 in a car to order an immediate retreat. No. 304 Squadron requested railway wagons to transport the flying material, but the only ones available were full of corn. 
The military commissioner argued that the Army Group had ordered provisions be sent back as a priority but the flying squadron officer threatened to machine gun the railway station if the wagons were not handed over. The corn was emptied, and the flying squadrons loaded holding up the departure of the train. Topic. EEF aerial support Air raids by the EEF were carried out during the night of 1 half November when 12 bombs were dropped on Gaza. On 3 and 4 November air raids were made over the hills north of Beersheba. By 6 November it was reported that Ottoman hospitals were seen being moved back indicating the beginnings of a general retreat towards Mejdal which was also bombed by aircraft. Bombs were also dropped on the main positions behind the Kawaka defences, near Umm Amidit, on Gaza and on shelters west of Sharia, and three aerial combats were fought against three hostile aircraft. During this time German aircraft had rarely been seen, but that afternoon two RE-8s and two BE-12, a aircraft from No. 1 Squadron on photography patrol were attacked by four Albatross aircraft and badly damaged. While a German aircraft was shot down in flames near the Wadi Hesse. Up until the Ottoman withdrawal became apparent on 7 November, the Royal Flying Corps had mainly been involved in strategical reconnaissance by the 40th Army Wing, while the 5th Corps Wing had been undertaking artillery registration and tactical photography. Now most aircraft began bomb and machine gun attacks on the retiring columns. During the pursuit No. 1 Australian Flying Squadron, carried out the photographic work, taking detailed photos of the country and the position of the enemy immediately ahead, and took part in air raids. For a full week, they attacked the Ottoman columns with machine guns and bombs, as well as Ottoman infrastructure including aerodromes, transport and artillery, hitting many of their targets. Concentrations of Ottoman forces were reported on 7 November at El Mejdal and Beit Duras, to the north of the Wadi Hesse. While the morning reconnaissance on 8 November reported the enemy retreating from everywhere, but the Ottoman aerial squadrons appeared to have been delayed. On the aerodromes at Julis, just beyond Mejdal, at Iraq El Menchie, and at Et Tyne, aircraft were on the ground and many hangars had not yet been dismantled. A bombing raid by 30 aircraft, including nine Australian aircraft, attacked the largest aerodromes at Iraq El Menchie in the morning. This raid, together with a repeat in the afternoon, caused considerable damage as 200 bombs were dropped including 48 hits, 10 of which hit aircraft on the ground. Several hangars were set on fire or damaged, while aircraft on the ground were also damaged. Aircraft which escaped from Iraq El Menchie and Julis were bombed twice on 9 November. And at Et Tyne on 9 November at least nine aircraft were destroyed. When Desert Mounted Corps reached Iraq El Menchie and Et Tyne, on 10 and of November they found eight destroyed aircraft and the aerodromes along with the Iraq El Menchie railway station in ruins. Other targets included railway stations and junctions, troops on the march, supply dumps, transport were all continually bombed and machine gunned, a further five hostile aircraft were destroyed at Ramla Aerodrome and another one at Ludd while the battlefield was covered with debris from aerial and ground bombardments. Hostile aircraft flew in formations of between two and four aircraft in an attempt to challenge the new superiority of the EEF aircraft but on almost every occasion were unsuccessful. EEF aircraft controlled the skies for a time, although a renewal of the air war occurred on about 24 November. During the day RFC dropped nearly 300 bombs on various objectives. Troops and transport north of Julis and Fallujah were bombed with destructive effect and attacked with machine gun fire. In Julis station direct hits were obtained on rolling stock. 120 bombs were dropped later in day in and around El Tyne. Several direct hits on hangars, two of which burst into flames. One direct hit on machine on the aerodrome. Stores near railway and station buildings attacked with effect, troops in neighborhoods scattered by a number of bombs dropped among them. 
Our pilots then descended and machine gunned them. Topic: The 9th of November. The only infantry unit capable of advancing on the 9th of November was the 52nd Lowland Division's 156th Scottish Rifles Brigade, commanded by Brigadier General Archibald Herbert Leggett. The 155th and 157th Brigades of the 52nd Lowland Division were regrouping on 9 November, after fierce fighting for Sausage Ridge on 8 November, most of the Egyptian Expeditionary Forces Infantry Divisions were at the end of their lines of communication and were not able to follow up the Ottoman withdrawal. 21 Corps 54th East Anglian Division was forced to rest at Gaza and the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade at Beit Hanan. In the rear, Lt. Gen. Philip Chetwode's 20th Corps had transferred its transport to 21st Corps. XX Corps 60th, two halves in D London Division Major General John Shea was resting at HUJ and its 10th Irish Major General John Longley and 74th Yeomanry Major General Eric Girdwood Divisions were at Carm. In the field were the 53rd Welsh Division Major General S. F. Mott, Corps Cavalry, the Imperial Camel Corps Brigade and the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, deployed in the front line near Telephone El Kuwilf in the foothills of the Judean Hills north of Beersheba. Allenby ordered the Yeomanry Mounted Division back from Kuwilf to Shavel immediately, in the afternoon of 8 November but they did not arrive on the right flank of Desert Mounted Corps until two days later, on the 10 November. The Imperial Camel Corps Brigade was also returned to Shavel's command on the 11th of November when the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade was ordered forward 52 miles 84 kilometers from Beersheba. They arrived 18 and a half hours later. Meanwhile, Shavel was forced to send the Australian Mounted Division back to water on 9 November, so only the Anzac Mounted Division less the New Zealanders which had watered at Jamame was available to continue the pursuit. Had the Australian and New Zealand regiments been armed with the sword they may have had opportunities for decisive shock actions in addition to the Yeomanry cavalry charges at Huj, El Magar and Abu Shush, the Ottoman 8th Army troops were retiring in some order as quickly as possible, protected against serious attack, and fairly well ahead of their pursuers, while the 7th Army in good condition, had retired about 10 miles 16 kilometers without interference, and was preparing to launch a counter Attack. While the EEF issued orders for the pursuit to advance on 9 November towards the Nar Sukrayir, more than 25 miles 40 km north of Gaza, the next possible line of defense. ISDUD By 9 November the 8th Army had retreated 20 miles 32 kilometers, while the 7th Army had lost hardly any ground. Soon after daylight, Chater's Anzac Mounted Division set out to ride across the maritime plain towards the coast, having watered their horses the previous evening. By about 8.30 the 1st Light Horse Brigade entered Barrere and around an hour later the 2nd Light Horse Brigade was approaching Friedrich Freiherr Kress von Kressenstein's 8th Army headquarters at Hulekot, where an Ottoman rearguard occupied a strong position. The brigade made a dismounted attack, capturing 600 prisoners, large amounts of supplies, materiel and an abandoned German field hospital. At midday El Mejdal, 13 miles 21 kilometers northeast of Gaza, was occupied by the 1st Light Horse Brigade, when they captured 170 prisoners and found a good well with a steam pump, enabling the brigade to quickly water all horses. After passing the ancient town of Ashkelon the Anzac Mounted Division was notified by the Desert Mounted Corps that the 21st Corps was marching up the coast towards El Mejdal and Julis. As the main Ottoman road and railway leading north from Gaza were both cut Shavel ordered the division to advance towards Beit Daraz, requiring the division to turn northeast. 
Subsequently the 1st Light Horse Brigade entered ISDUD close to the Mediterranean Sea while, on their right, the 2nd Light Horse Brigade captured the villages of Swaffer el Sharkia and Iraq Suwaidan, a convoy and its escort, some 350 prisoners. As the brigade was reorganizing to secure the prisoners, Ottoman guns further north opened fire, shelling both captors and captives alike. Just before dark the 2nd Light Horse Brigade captured a further 200 prisoners, before the Anzac Mounted Division took up a night battle outpost line, along high ground south of the Wadi Mejma, from near ISDUD to Iraq Suwaiden. Meanwhile Hudson's Australian Mounted Division, spent most of the 9th of November searching for water, which was eventually found at HUJ. By the evening of 8 November, the 3rd Light Horse Brigade had not watered since 7 November and the 5th Mounted Brigade since the evening of 6 November, and that if these two brigades were not watered the following day, the Divisional War Diary reported, "...results will be most serious." After relieving these two brigades at 7.30 on 9 November, the 4th Light Horse Brigade sent out patrols searching for water. The 12th Light Horse Regiment found one small well at Nade, while another patrol found two wells at Sim Sim with basic lifting appliances which made watering very slow. They also found touch with the Anzac Mounted Division. By noon on 9 November the division was watering at Jamame, which was not expected to be completed until 1800. After most of the horses had been watered, they advanced 16 miles 26 kilometers to the Castina ISDUD line capturing prisoners, guns, and transports on the way. This march made during the night of 9 tenths November was the only night march made during the Sinai and Palestine campaign. Through Ottoman territory, the Australian Mounted Division's 12th Light Horse Regiment 4th Light Horse Brigade advanced north from Beret to Al Falouha, arriving at 2400 on 9 tenths November when engineering stores and five burnt out aircraft were captured. The division was followed by the 4th Light Horse Brigade Field Ambulance and the divisional train made up of brigade transport and supply sections carrying rations. The field ambulance set up a dressing station and treated about 40 wounded men before moving through HUJ at 1600. After encountering rugged mountainous ravines and 6 miles .7 kilometers of very rough terrain, at around midnight they set up camp in a wadi bed. Barrow's Yeomanry Mounted Division, had been fighting in the Telephone El Kuwailf region until Allenby ordered it to rejoin the Desert Mounted Corps, 20 miles 32 kilometers away on the coast. Meanwhile, infantry in the 10th Irish and 74th Yeomanry Divisions remained at Carm, while the 60th London Division remained at HUJ. Topic. The 10th of November. Topic: Wadi Sukarir. Ottoman forces were encountered on the 10th of November near ISDUD on the Mediterranean Sea. The leading brigade of the 52nd Lowland Division, the 156th Scottish Rifles Brigade, advanced 15 miles 24 kilometers despite encountering stiff Ottoman resistance and was subjected to artillery bombardment from across the Nar Sukarir. The 156th Scottish Rifles Brigade pushing across the Nar Sukarir at Jisresdud, to Hamama. Here they successfully established a bridgehead on the Ottoman right flank. Ample water was found and the bridgehead was enlarged the following day. They followed the 1st Light Horse Brigade which had reported, All clear, at ISDUD at 8.30, although the Anzac Mounted Division reported on the morning of 10 November that the division was, ridden out and had to halt for water, the 1st Light Horse Brigade had found water the previous afternoon at El Medjel and so was able to advance to occupy ISDUD. However, the 2nd Light Horse Brigade was unable to advance on 10 November because of strong Ottoman rearguards near New Beit Duras and Custine. 
They spent the day searching for water and watering the brigade, before moving to Hamama at night, to complete watering of the horses. Topic. Same The 4th Light Horse Brigade was ordered at 10.40 on 10 November to threaten the Ottoman force opposing 3rd Light Horse Brigade on the Menchie al Faluha line. Between 8 o'clock and 10.30, the 3rd Light Horse Brigade had occupied the Iraq El Menchie station while the 4th Light Horse Brigade entered Al Faluha 2 miles 3.2 kilometers to the northwest. The Australian Mounted Division was joined a few hours later by the Yeomanry Mounted Division which had left HUJ early in the morning. They came up on the right of the Australian Mounted Division and took over Iraq El Menchie extending the line a little further east. By the afternoon of 10 November the whole of the Desert Mounted Corps with the exception of the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, still at Telephone El Kuwailf were in line from a point a little east of Iraq El Menchie to the sea. Both the Australian and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions reconnoitred the eastern half of the Ottoman line running from Castina, roughly through Balin and Barkasia, to the neighbourhood of Beit Gibran in the Judean Hills. Shavel ordered the Yeomanry Mounted Division to move westward to the coast to support the Anzac Mounted Division, leaving the Australian Mounted Division on the right flank. Neither he nor Hodgson commanding the Australian Mounted Division were aware at that time, that the division was threatened by three or four Ottoman 8th Army Infantry Divisions. The 16th and 26th Divisions 20th Corps and the 53rd Division 22nd Corps were holding a 6 miles 9 .7 kilometers line between the railway line and Beit Gibran, all more or less reorganised and all within striking distance. Ottoman trenches had been dug from Sumul 4 miles 6.4 kilometers north of Iraq El Menchie to Zeta 3 miles 4.8 kilometers to the northeast and to the east of the railway line with its headquarters at Al Faluha on 10 and the 11th of November the Australian Mounted Division became engaged during the 10th of November in stubborn fighting when the three brigades of the Australian Mounted Division ran into this Ottoman rearguard's left flank near the village of Sumul at 12.55, Ottoman forces were seen advancing from Sumul, and the 4th Light Horse Brigade deployed to attack them, with the 3rd Light Horse and the 5th Mounted Brigade in support. By 1633 3rd Light Horse Brigade headquarters were established 870 yards 800 meters southeast of Al Faluha on the railway line, but owing to darkness at 1715 the attack was not developed and night battle outpost lines were established at 20 hundred. The 4th Light Horse Brigade held a line linking to the Anzac Mounted Division at Beit Afin, while the Ottomans' rearguard were holding a ridge near Barkasia with three cavalry troops, three guns and about 1,500 infantry. Topic. The 11th of November The Mounted Infantry and Cavalry Brigades of the Australian Mounted Division were unable to advance further on 10 November, due to intense Ottoman artillery fire which continued throughout the day. However, Sumul was occupied unopposed, at 6 o'clock by patrols of the 3rd Light Horse Brigade on of November when the place was found to be deserted. However by 9.30 Ottoman units were holding a high ridge 1.5 miles 2.4 kilometers northeast of the town and Ottoman field guns began shelling Sume from about 3 miles 4.8 kilometers away. In the afternoon the brigade carried out active patrolling making themselves as conspicuous as possible without becoming engaged, while the division advanced north, Allenby's force was deployed with infantry from the 52nd Lowland Division and the 75th Division in the centre, the Australian Mounted Division on their right flank with the Anzac and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions on the infantry's left flank. He ordered the 52nd Lowland Division to extend their position across the Nar Sukarer on the Ottoman right flank. And, reinforced with two additional brigades, he ordered the Australian Mounted Division to advance towards Telephone S. Safi where they encountered a determined and substantial Ottoman counterattack. 
The New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was ordered to rejoin the Anzac Mounted Division on the 11th of November. They left Beersheba at 1630 and arrived at Hamama at 2300 on the 12th of November. Topic: Ottoman Line. The 20 miles 32 kilometers long defensive line, chosen by the Ottoman commanders to rally their 20,000-strong army and stop the invasion of southern Palestine, was also designed to protect the Jaffa to Jerusalem Railway and Junction Station. Prisoners had been captured from almost every unit of the Ottoman army, indicating that rearguards had been driven back in on the main body of the 8th Ottoman army. However, all along their line Ottoman resistance grew noticeably stronger. Erich von Falkenhayn, commander of the Yildirim Army Group, had decided to make a stand in front of Junction Station, deploying his forces by the evening of the 11th of November and he ordered a counterattack against the British right flank which was covered by the Australian Mounted Division. His plan was to overwhelm them, cut their supply lines, outflank and capture all the forward units. Originally ordered for the 11th of November it was postponed until the next day. Topic: The 12th of November. Topic: Infantry attack. As part of the preparations for the attack on Junction Station, planned for the next day, the 52nd Lowland Division made a preparatory attack near the coast. They were to attack north of the Nar Sukarer between the villages of Burka and Yazer with the Yeomanry Mounted Division acting as flank guard. Their objective was an important Ottoman rearguard position which ran from the village of Burka to Brown Hill. While the village was easily taken the steep-sided brown hill proved an extremely difficult attack. The hill was topped by a large cairn and commanded a long field of fire over the plain southwards across the Nar Sukarer. By the time a battalion of the 156th Brigade, covered by two batteries of the 264th Brigade Royal Field Artillery and the South African Field Artillery Brigade of 75th Division captured the crest, the battalion had been reduced to one officer and about 100 men. However, just 20 minutes after their victory, the remnants of the Scots battalion was unable to withstand an Ottoman counterattack and was driven off after a fierce struggle at close quarters. The two-thirds road Gurkha rifles were then ordered to renew the attack at dusk. Owing to poor light, the artillery was no longer able to give much assistance, but the Gurkhas quickly retook the hill with a bayonet charge, suffering 50 casualties, and in the process recovering two Lewis guns. The fighting here has been described as equal in intensity to the 157th Highland Light Infantry Brigade's assault at Sausage Ridge on 8 November. The success of these operations north of the Nar Sukarer opened the way on the Mediterranean coast for the main attacks the following day, on the Ottoman Army's front line positions. Topic. Ottoman counterattack. While the infantry attack was in progress, the Australian Mounted Division advanced in the direction of Telephone S. Safi, to press the left flank of the Ottoman forces as strongly as possible. About 4,000 Australian and British mounted troops of 3rd and 4th Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades moved northwards in a conspicuous demonstration of aggression. The Ottoman force appeared at first, to have retired altogether, and the 9th Light Horse Regiment, 3rd Light Horse Brigade, was able to ride through Barkasia, with one troop pressing on to occupy Telephone S. Safi. The 5th Mounted Brigade also found Balin unoccupied, and rapidly advanced northwards towards Telephone S. Safi and Custanay. By 12 o'clock the Australian Mounted Division was spread over at least 6 miles 9 .7 kilometers facing the north and east, when four divisions of the Ottoman 7th Army about 5,000 soldiers began their counterattack. 
Ten minutes later the British Honourable Artillery Company Horse Artillery Battery opened fire, but was hopelessly outshot, outnumbered, and outranged by Ottoman guns of greater power and weight. The Ottoman infantry divisions were moving south from El Tina 3 miles kilometers east of Castina from the Ottoman-controlled branch line of the railway line. Here and further north along the railway, trains were arriving with huge numbers of Ottoman soldiers, deployed for the attack in three separate columns of all arms. They were seen advancing towards Telephone S. Safi from the north and northeast. Not long afterwards, the 11th Light Horse Regiment 4th Light Horse Brigade was forced to retire from Castina, as Ottoman units occupied the place in strength. The approach of the 8th Ottoman Army's 20th Corps 16th, 26th, 53rd, and 54th Divisions was at first unknown to the 5th Mounted Brigade in Balin. But at about 1300 they were attacked by about 5,000 Ottoman soldiers in two columns, one coming down the track from Junction Station to Telephone El Safi, and the other arrived by train and marched south from El Tina Station. The 5th Mounted Brigade, was pushed back out of Balin before they could be reinforced by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade which rode from Summel, followed by two batteries of the Australian Mounted Division. One light horse regiment which managed to occupy Berkuzi, was forced to retire by a very strong Ottoman force supported by heavy artillery fire from several batteries. All available troops of the Australian Mounted Division were now engaged, but the Ottoman attack continued to be strongly pressed. The 4th Light Horse Brigade had been unable to support the 3rd Light Horse or the 5th Mounted Brigades, as they were being heavily attacked on the left of the 5th Mounted Brigade, while holding the line to the west towards Der Sunade railway line. Ottoman units managed to advance to within 100 yards 91 meters of the 4th Light Horse Brigade's position, but were eventually stopped at the end of the day by machine gun and rifle fire. Hodgson, commander of the Australian Mounted Division, had ordered a slow withdrawal by 3rd Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades to high ground on the line Beer Summel, Kerbet Geladia. The order had only just been given when another Ottoman train was seen moving south. It stopped west of Balin and a fresh force of Ottoman soldiers rapidly deployed to attack the left flank of the 5th Mounted Brigade. Fighting steadily and withdrawing skillfully, the 3rd Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades reached the edge of Summel village, where the Ottoman attack was finally held. Two batteries of Australian Mounted Division had come into action on the high ground northwest of Summe firing on the fresh Ottoman force moving over the open plain in full view of the gunners. Effective EEF artillery fire halted this attacking Ottoman advance, forcing them to fall back a little where they dug trenches. The attack ended at 1800 in darkness. Shavel's reliance on the steadiness of the Australian Mounted Division was amply justified. The Yildirim Army Group commander had been forced to halt his 7th Army's attack, and then to take away from it the 16th Division, plus one regiment. While in their eastern sector, the 3rd Cavalry Division 7th Army's 3rd Corps and 19th Division 8th Army held a line in front of Beit Gibran. This force waited throughout the day, prepared to begin a flank attack, but the opportunity never eventuated. Topic. The 13th of November Topic. Magar Ridge A 20,000-strong Ottoman force was deployed to defend the Jaffa to Jerusalem Railway along the Wadi al-Sarar and al-Nabi Rubin. They held the prominent 100-foot high ridge, which stretched north towards Zernika and El Kabeba dominated the battlefield, which consisted of mainly bare and open cultivated land. This naturally strong ridge formed the backbone of the Ottoman Army's 20-mile long defensive position defended by the 8th Army's 3rd Division 22nd Corps to the north, the 7th Division 8th Army Reserve to the east, the 54th Division 20th Corps near El Mesmier, with the 53rd Division linking to the 26th Division 20th Corps holding Telephone S. Safi. 
On the ridge, the villages of Katra and Al Maghar had been fortified to become two strong defensive positions, each with commanding views of the countryside. These villages were separated by the Wadi Jamis, which links the Wadi al Sarar with the Nar Rubin. Allenby's plan for 13 November was to turn the right flank of the Ottoman line on the coast, despite aircraft and cavalry reconnaissances revealing the large Ottoman force, inland on his right flank facing the Australian Mounted Division. Indeed the division was ordered to make as big a demonstration of their activities, as possible, to focus Ottoman attention away from the coastal sector. Here Allenby planned for the Anzac and Yeomanry mounted divisions to advance northwards to attempt to turn the Ottoman right flank, assisted by infantry attacks on the Ottoman right centre. In the centre, the 21 Corps 52nd Lowland and the 75th Divisions were to advance towards Junction Station between the Gaza Road on the right, and the village of El Magar on the left. These infantry attacks were held up by very strong Ottoman defences. At Mesmier the Ottoman army was strongly deployed on high ground in and near the village, and well-sighted machine guns swept all approaches. However, infantry in the 75th Division made steady slow progress, eventually forcing the main body of the Ottoman rear guard, to fall back to a slight ridge 1 mile 1 kilometers to the northeast. Towards dusk the final stage of the infantry assault was supported by two troops of 11th Light Horse Regiment 4th Light Horse Brigade, who galloped into action on the infantry's right flank and gave valuable fire support. An infantry frontal attack covered by machine gun fire drove the Ottoman defenders off the ridge, enabling Mesmier es Shirkie to be occupied soon after. Subsequently they halted in darkness not far from Junction Station. On their right flank the Australian Mounted Division's 3rd and 4th Light Horse and 5th Mounted Brigades, reinforced by the 2nd Light Horse Brigade Anzac Mounted Division, the 7th Mounted Brigade Yeomanry Mounted Division and two cars of the 12th Light Armoured Motor Battery, attacked in line advancing northwards towards Junction Station. The 4th Light Horse Brigade covering the right flank of the 75th Division, entered Kazaza at 12 o'clock, when the 7th Mounted Brigade on their left, was only 0.5 miles .80 kilometers from Junction Station. By 1600 the 4th Light Horse Brigade was ordered to push forward to El Tina as the infantry advance on their left was progressing. It was occupied the following morning. On the left flank of the 21st Corps, the remainder of the Desert Mounted Corps, the Anzac and the Yeomanry Mounted Divisions covered the infantry attack, with Yibna as their first objective and Akir their second. As soon as Junction Station was captured they were to swing north to occupy Ramla and Lod and reconnoiter towards Jaffa. After capturing Yibna, the 8th Mounted Brigade Yeomanry Mounted Division continued their advance northwards, to El Kabeba and Zernika. However, the 22nd Mounted Brigade was held up by Ottoman units defending Akir, while the 6th Mounted Brigade with the Imperial Camel Brigade covering their northern flank was directed to attack El Magar. The 52nd Lowland Division had been halted at about 11.30 by heavy shrapnel and machine gun fire forcing them to the shelter of the Wadi Jamis about 600 yards 550 meters from their objective. Every attempt to leave the wadi was stopped by very heavy fire from well-placed Ottoman machine guns. At about 14.30 it was agreed between the GOC 52nd Lowland Division and the GOC Yeomanry Mounted Division that the 6th Mounted Brigade should attack the El Magar Ridge in combination with a renewed infantry assault on Katra and El Magar. Half an hour later two mounted regiments, the Royal Buckinghamshire Yeomanry and the Queen's Own Dorset Yeomanry 6th Mounted Brigade, already deployed in the Wadi Jamis, advanced in column of squadrons extended to four paces across 3,000 yards 2.7 kilometers, at first trotting then galloping up and onto the crest of the ridge. The horses were completely exhausted and could not continue the pursuit of the escaping Ottoman units down the far side. However, the Ottoman defenders continued to hold El Magar village until two squadrons of the Berkshire Yeomanry Regiment 6th Mounted Brigade fighting dismounted, with two battalions of the 52nd Lowland Division, renewed the attack. 
fighting in the village continued until 1700 when both of the crucial fortified villages of Katra and El Magar were captured. Topic: The 14th of November. Units of the 75th Division supported by several armored cars occupied Junction Station during the morning of 14 November, cutting the Ottoman Jaffa to Jerusalem Railway. While the 52nd Lowland and 75th Divisions concentrated and reorganized their ranks during the day, the 4th Light Horse Brigade entered El Tina early in the morning, with the remainder of the Australian Mounted Division following a couple of hours later. Here good wells containing plenty of water were found but without steam pumps, watering was not complete until 1600. Meanwhile, their divisional supply train followed, traveling from Beersheba via Herrera and Gaza on the 11th of November, to reach ISDUD on the 14th of November, then on to Mezami the next day and Junction Station on the 16th of November. Topic. Ayn Kara The advance was taken over by the Yeomanry Mounted Division which crossed the railway north of Junction Station, and the Anzac Mounted Division which pressed the retreating Ottoman army northwards near the coast. The Anzac Mounted Division had been ordered capture Ramla and Ludd, and cut the only road linking Jaffa to Jerusalem. During the morning Meldrum's New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade crossed the Wadi S. Surer, Nar Rubin close to the sand dunes with 1st Light Horse Brigade on its right, and by 9 o'clock had occupied El Kababa. They pushed in towards the Wadi Hunain where Ottoman rearguards were encountered in the orange groves and on the hills between El Kababa and the sand dunes. About noon the 1st Light Horse Brigade drove an Ottoman rearguard from a ridge facing Yibna and occupied the village of Rehovit also known as Dairin. At the same time the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, commanded by Brigadier General William Meldrum, ran into a determined and well-entrenched Ottoman rearguard near Ayn Kara, which they attacked. Fierce close quarter fighting against the Ottoman 3rd Infantry Division continued during the afternoon. Although severely threatened, the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade eventually prevailed and they occupied Jaffa two days later, unopposed. The official New Zealand historian concluded in 1922 that the engagement at Ayn Kara demonstrated the ability of the New Zealand Mounted Rifles regiments to rapidly attack and reinforce successive positions on horseback. During this intense engagement, the attacking power of the mounted rifle arm, against a strongly entrenched infantry position was comprehensively proven. The 15th of November 1917 Topic. Abu Shushe, Lud and Ramla At midnight on 14 November von Falkenhayn ordered a general withdrawal and the Ottoman 7th Army, which retreated back into the Judean Hills towards Jerusalem, while the 8th Army was ordered to retreat to the north of Jaffa across the Nar el Auja about 3 miles kilometers north of Jaffa. These Ottoman armies had suffered heavily, and lost between 40 to 60 miles 64 to 97 kilometers of Ottoman territory north of the old Gaza-Beersheba line. These two Ottoman armies left behind 10,000 prisoners of war and 100 guns. The day after the action at Ayn Kara, the 75th Division and the Australian Mounted Division advanced towards Latron, where the Jaffa to Jerusalem road enters the Judean Hills, while the Anzac Mounted Division occupied Ramla and Ludd about 5 miles kilometers north of Junction Station. An Ottoman rearguard above Abu Shushe blocked the Vale of Ajalan on the right flank of the advance towards Ramla. The Yeomanry Mounted Division reached the Jerusalem Road, after the 6th Mounted Brigade made a cavalry charge, which overwhelmed an Ottoman rearguard position. This charge has been described as even more difficult than that at Magar Ridge, owing to the rocky nature of the ground over which the horsemen rode.
Topic: The 16th of November. The pursuit continued as the EEF pushed north, Jaffa was captured by the Anzac Mounted Division in mid-November, and Jerusalem was captured by the 20th Corps on 9 December. Desert Mounted Corps alone captured more than 9,000 prisoners and 80 guns before the new front stabilized in the Judean Hills. 17 days of operations virtually without rest, had resulted in an advance of between 50 and 60 miles 80 and 97 kilometers from Beersheba, major and minor engagements occurring on 13 of those days. Most of the mounted units had covered at least 170 miles 270 kilometers since 29 October 1917 capturing 5,270 prisoners and over 60 guns and about 50 machine guns. Since the advance from Gaza and Beersheba began very heavy casualties and over 10,000 Ottoman prisoners of war and 100 guns had been captured by the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, the EEF had evolved into a genuinely imperial all-arms force, and the offensive was a nearly ideal instance of the proper use of all arms in combination. Topic. Jaffa and Latron On 16 November Latron was captured and the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade Anzac Mounted Division occupied Jaffa, without opposition. They administered the city until representatives of the Director of Occupied Enemy Territory arrived to take over the job. Topic. Judean Hills 19-24 November Despite not having established a defensive line of entrenchments, Allenby reviewed the threat of counterattack and his supply situation. He decided that a force large enough to attack into the Judean Hills, and another separate force to operate on the Maritime Plain, could be maintained at an extended distance from base. On 18 November, while Allenby was at the 21st Corps headquarters at El Castine, the decision was made to closely follow the Ottoman 7th Army into the Judean Hills. This decision, to quickly attack Fevzi Pasha's 7th Army in the Judean Hills, was to keep the pressure on this Ottoman army with the hope of capturing Jerusalem, while denying them time to complete their reorganization, dig deep trenches or worst of all, counterattack. Two infantry divisions, the 52nd Lowland Major General J. Hill and the 75th Division, Major General P. C. Palin, and two mounted divisions, the Yeomanry and the Australian Mounted Divisions, were to begin the advance into the Judean Hills. The Ottoman forces they encountered on the road into the hills, were rearguards von Falkenhayn had ordered the 20th Corps to establish, as it retired back to defend Jerusalem. Established on commanding ridges, these rearguards were made up of small groups dug in on the hills, each of which were attacked one after the other by Indian and Gurkha troops who outmaneuvered the Ottoman defenders. A uh, LL the armies that have sought to take Jerusalem have passed this way, save only that of Joshua. Philistine and Hittite, Babylonian and Assyrian, Egyptian and Roman and Greek, Frankish Knights of the Cross, all have passed this way, and all have watered the hill of Amwas with their blood. Topic. Nebi Samuel After taking over the advance on 19 November, the 75th Division with the Yeomanry Mounted Division on their northern flank, advanced towards Nebi Samuel. This fortified and prominent hill 908 metres 2,979 feet above sea level in the Judean Hills, was the traditional site of the tomb of the Prophet Samuel, was eventually captured late in the evening by the 234th Brigade, 75th Division, after particularly fierce fighting between 21 and 24 December. They had been supported during this battle by the 52nd Lowland Division which had taken the more difficult line, when the 75th Division had been directed to the south-western approaches. These two divisions of the 21st Corps commanded by Bulfin had been involved in the extremely successful, but almost continuous fighting advance from 7 November. 
their part in this first campaign of maneuver has them advance -ing in stages and then faltered in the hills around Jerusalem where they were d defeated by the Turkish forces defending Jerusalem and withdrawn. Here Fevzi's Seventh Army fought them to a standstill. Topic: <inaudible> Mediterranean Coast 24 to 25 November. Topic: <inaudible> Nar el Auja. On 24 November, infantry from the 54th East Anglian Division and the Anzac Mounted Division began their attack on the Mediterranean coast, to the north of Jaffa across the Nahr el Auja. The northern bank was defended by the Ottoman 3rd and 7th Divisions 8th Army. Two bridgeheads were established by the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade. The first was across the bridge on the main road near Kerbet Hadra, while the second was established on the coast Sheikh Mu'anis, near the mouth of the river. Their aims were to discourage the Ottoman 8th Army from transferring troops into the Judean Hills to reinforce the 7th Army, and to gain territory. The New Zealand Mounted Brigade, and two infantry battalions of the 54th East Anglian Division, continued to hold these two bridgeheads on the northern bank, until they were attacked by overwhelming forces on 25 November. The 3rd and 7th Divisions of the Ottoman 8th Army pushed back the bridgeheads and restored their hold on the Nahr el Auja, and the tactical situation. Topic. Relief of 21st Corps and Desert Mounted Corps 24 November to 2 December On 24 November also, Allenby ordered the relief of the 21st Corps and Desert Mounted Corps by the 20th Corps. This relief of the 21st Corps has been described as T his unnecessary shifting of troops which was a time-consuming procedure that delayed Jerusalem's fall due to the timid nature of the British advance. Owing to supply problems during the advance from Beersheba, Allenby had left Philip W. Chetwode's 20th Corps in the rear close to the lines of communication where they could be easily supplied and refitted. After ten days' rest, these fresh troops were ordered to the front in the Judean Hills to take over the offensive against the Ottoman 7th Army. On 23 November, the 60th London Division, commanded by Major General John Shea, arrived at Latron from HUJ and relieved the seriously depleted 52nd Lowland and the 75th Divisions, without much of a reduction in fighting ability on 28 November. On the same day, the 74th Yeomanry Division, commanded by Major General E. S. Girdwood, arrived at Latron from Carm, and two days later the 10th Irish Division, commanded by Major General J. R. Longley, also arrived at Latron from Carm. The movement of such large formations made a pause in the fighting unavoidable, and so the attack was discontinued, but von Falkenhayn and his Ottoman army took notice of the temporary cessation of hostilities. Topic: Ottoman counterattacks the 27th of November to the 1st of December. Von Falkenhayn and the Ottoman army sought to benefit from the weakened and depleted state of the worn-out British Empire divisions which had been fighting and advancing since the beginning of the month. During the week beginning the 27th of November the Ottoman army launched a series of infantry attacks employing shock tactics in the hope of breaking the British lines during the period of destabilization created by EEF reinforcements and withdrawals. Counterattacks were launched by the Ottoman 16th and 19th divisions in the Judean Hills on Nebi Samuel and on the Zetun Plateau. Attacks were also launched against British lines of communication via a gap between the British forces on the Maritime Plain and those in the Judean Hills and also against several British units spread out on the Maritime Plain. 
The Ottoman forces on the maritime plain advanced in strength in the region of Wilhelma, a German colony, to attack the 162nd Brigade, 54th Division. Here a strong attack was launched against the EEF units holding Wilhelma Station. The attackers also established a strong firing line in the Wadi Ranti. By 1700 these coordinated attacks had progressed to within 400 yards 370 meters of the British infantry line, where they were held while both flanks of the Ottoman force were attacked and driven in, forcing the attackers back to Ranti. On the left the 54th East Anglian Division a company of the 4th Battalion Imperial Camel Brigade was attacked at Bald Hill, south of Malebus and pushed back 500 yards 460 meters off the hill, which was later targeted by EEF artillery. Also on 27 November, the Yeomanry Mounted Division's advanced post at Zetun on the western end of the Betunia Ridge was attacked by a larger Ottoman force. They managed to hold off the attackers until 28 November, when the division was forced to withdraw from Sheikh Abu Ezi Zetun and Beit Ur el Foka as well as Zetun. On 28 November, the Australian Mounted Division less the 5th Mounted Yeomanry Brigade which had been resting at Mejdal from 19 to 27 November, was ordered to return to the Judean Hills. The 4th Light Horse Brigade's march to Berfilia was diverted straight on to Beit Ur el Tata. When they reached south of Beit Ur el Tata, the brigade covered a dangerous, isolated position, out of contact with either the 8th or the 6th Mounted Brigades. By nightfall, the line was held by the 60th London Division, the 8th Mounted, the 22nd Mounted, the 7th Mounted, the 156th Brigade, the 155th Brigade, the 4th Light Horse Brigade still out of touch with the 8th and 6th Mounted Brigades. This line was hard-pressed after nightfall when the Ottoman attackers launched a very fierce bombing attack reopening a gap in the EEF line. These operations were supported on 28 November by a combined force of the British and Australian Nose, 1 and 111 squadrons, which attacked the Tool Karam aerodrome with aerial bombing. This attack was repeated the following morning and evening after German planes bombed the Julis aerodrome and hit No. 113 Squadron's orderly room. As the Ottoman counterattacks continued on 29 November, the 5th Mounted Yeomanry Brigade was ordered to rejoin its division, while the 10th Light Horse Regiment, 3rd Light Horse Brigade remained under orders of the 60th London Division. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade marched into Berfilia 2 miles .2 kilometers west of El Burj. The Yeomanry Mounted Division was relieved by the 74th Yeomanry Division. Two brigades of infantry were substituted for four brigades of cavalry, resulting in a sixfold increase in the number of rifles. With additional reinforcements from the dismounted Australian Mounted Division, these proved sufficient troops to hold all subsequent Ottoman counterattacks. At about 1 o'clock on 1 December a battalion of the Ottoman 19th Division, armed with hand grenades, launched a series of attacks at Beit Ur el Tata against the 157th Brigade, and northeast of El Burj against the 3rd Light Horse Brigade. After two attempts at Beit Ur el Tata, they succeeded in driving a severely weakened infantry company of the 5th Battalion Highland Light Infantry, 52nd Lowland Division, off 200 yards 180 meters of the ridge in front of the village, but by 4.30 they had reoccupied the position. The 8th Light Horse Regiment northeast of El Burj withstood four separate onslaughts by enemy forces armed with stick grenades. A squadron of the Royal Gloucestershire Hussars of the 5th Mounted Yeomanry Brigade, attached to the 3rd Light Horse Brigade was rushed up to fill gaps in the line, and the Hong Kong Battery came into action. They were reinforced by the 4th Battalion, Royal Scots Fusiliers with a small group of bombers from Beit Sira, which arrived just as Ottoman soldiers launched a new assault. The British bombing party attacked Ottoman bombers and after a fierce engagement forced them back. The Ottomans continued desperately to attack and another company of the 4th Scots Fusiliers came up. 
Combined with the steady fire of the dismounted 3rd Light Horse Brigade, the shower of bombs from the fusiliers forced the Ottoman soldiers to fall back and dig in. At dawn they surrendered. Ottoman counterattacks launched at Nebi Samuel on 1 December were repulsed, with the Ottoman 7th Army suffering heavy losses. The Ottoman army had failed to win any ground as a result of their counterattacks, and the advancing British troops were successfully replacing the worn-out 21st Corps, holding well-entrenched positions close to Jerusalem, with the fresh 20th Corps. Topic. Jerusalem 2–9 December By 2 December the relief of the 21st Corps by the 20th Corps was completed. And both sides began to adjust and improve their lines, leaving insecure or hard to defend places. The fresh EEF soldiers increased the strength of their line, creating a powerful concentration. Over four days the 10th Irish and 74th Yeomanry divisions extended their positions, while the extended position held by the 60th London division was decreased. Although it is claimed that on 3 December the Ottoman army had abandoned their counterattacks and that fighting in the Judean Hills ceased, as a consequence of units of the 74th Yeomanry Division recapturing Beit Ur el Foka, during a night-time attack, the position was impossible to hold. At daylight they found they were overlooked by Ottoman positions on higher ground. Bombing and hand-to-hand -hand fighting continued all morning, and the Yeomanry Infantry Battalion was forced to withdraw, suffering 300 casualties. <laughs> Mott's Detachment The 53rd Welsh Division 20th Corps, with the Corps Cavalry Regiment and a heavy battery attached, remained on the Hebron Road north of Beersheba, after that place was captured on 31 October and during the advance up the Maritime Plain. Now they came under direct orders from General Headquarters GHQ and became known as Mott's Detachment. The detachment was ordered to advance north along the Beersheba to Jerusalem Road and by 4 December had arrived 4.5 miles kilometers south of Hebron. Here two Australian light armoured cars from a light armoured motor battery LAM, drove in from the north. They reported no Ottoman units in Hebron, so the detachment continued their advance to the Dilb Valley that night. Chetwode commanding 20th Corps, ordered Mott to advance as quickly as possible and get into a position 3 miles kilometers south of Jerusalem, by the morning of 8 December. Mott's advanced guard moved tentatively during the night of 5 December to 3 miles kilometers north of Hebron, and by 7 December had come finally found an Ottoman rearguard defending Bethlehem 4 miles .4 kilometers from his objective. Bad weather prevented the advance continuing. So Mott's detachment was not able to cut the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, and get into position in time to cover the right flank of the 60th, London, division, although Mott managed to capture Solomon's Pools to the south of Bethlehem by the evening of 7 December. About noon on 8 December, Chetwode ordered the detachment to get moving. Mott finally attacked his main objective at Beit Yala at 1600. It was not until the evening that they continued their advance to find the way completely clear of Ottoman defenders. At the crucial moment, Mott's detachment had been unable to cover the southern flank of the 60th London Division, forcing the Londoners to pause during daylight, as infilating fire would have made their advance extremely costly. Topic. Surrender. During almost continuous rain on 8 December, Jerusalem ceased to be protected by the Ottoman Empire. At the same time Chetwode launched the final advance taking the heights to the west of the city. The Ottoman 7th Army retreated during the evening and the city surrendered the following day. Jerusalem was almost encircled by the EEF, although Ottoman army units briefly held the Mount of Olives on 9 December. 
They were attacked by units of the 60th London Division which captured the position the following afternoon. Topic: Casualties. From the 31st of October to the capture of Jerusalem, the Ottoman armies suffered 25,000 casualties. A total of 14,393 battle casualties were evacuated to Egypt from the EEF, along with 739 Australians during October and November 1917. These Australian wounded were mainly treated in the 1,040 beds of No. 14 Australian General Hospital at the Abashia Barracks, Cairo. Here 754 surgical cases, the heaviest battle casualties admissions of the Sinai and Palestine campaign, were admitted during November. These had been evacuated by ambulance trains from the British casualty clearing stations at Deir el Bela and Amara. During the same period it received 720 medical cases, which rapidly increased during the following months. Topic. Aftermath Topic. Capture of Arsif 20–21 December Allenby planned to establish a defensive line running from the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea. With both flanks secured, the line could be held with reasonable security. In order to establish this line, it was necessary to push the 3rd and 7th Infantry Divisions of the Ottoman 8th Army back away from the Nahr el Auja 4 miles .4 kilometers north of Jaffa on the Mediterranean coast. After the first attempt between 24 to 25 November, this second attempt in the same area was officially designated a subsidiary battle during the Jerusalem operations. One historian thought these operations hardly merit in size or importance the name Battle of Jaffa. Now, three infantry divisions of the 21st Corps began moving their units into position on the coastal plain on 7 December. The 75th Division was on the right with the 54th East Anglian Division in the centre and the 52nd Lowland Division on the coast. They relieved the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, which had been heavily involved in the first attempt to capture the Nahr el Auja, fought shortly after their victory at the Battle of Ayn Kara. Military operations resumed a fortnight after the surrender of Jerusalem with the final EEF attack of this campaign. Preparations were, however, complicated by the sodden state of the low and swampy ground on the southern banks of the Nahr el Auja where the attack would be launched, and the river was swollen by rain which had fallen on 19 and 20 December. From Malebus to the sea the river was between 40 to 50 feet 12 to 15 meters wide and 10 to 12 feet 3.0 to 3.7 meters deep except for the ford at the mouth known as Sheikh Muanis. To the north of the river two prominent spurs ran down to the river from a series of sandy ridges. These overlooked the damaged stone bridge at Kerbet Hadra to the east and the village of Sheikh Muanis, near Jerishe to the west where a mill dam bridged the stream. The Ottoman Eighth Army held strong commanding positions covering all the possible crossing places which had been used by the attackers in November. They held both spurs in addition to a post opposite the ford at the mouth of the Nahr el Auja. They also held a line extending east of Kerbet Hadra which crossed to the south bank of the river to include Bald Hill and Malebus. All three infantry brigades of the 52nd Lowland Division managed to cross the river Auja on the night of 20-21 December, completely surprising the defenders who surrendered without firing a shot. Temporary bridges were subsequently built so the infantry's artillery could cross the river. On 23 December the 52nd Lowland and 54th East Anglian divisions moved up the coast a further 5 miles 8.0 km, while the left of the advance reached Arsif 8 miles 13 km north of Jaffa, capturing key Ottoman defensive positions. They were supported by guns on warships. Shortly afterwards, the 52nd Lowland Division was ordered to France.
Topic: <laughs> Defense of Jerusalem 26 to 30 December. Officially recognized by the British as one of three battles which made up the Jerusalem operations. This Ottoman attack occurred between 26 and the 30th of December 1917. The 10th Irish, the 60th London, and the 74th Yeomanry divisions with support from infantry in the 53rd Welsh Division, 20th Corps, fought the 7th Ottoman Army's 24th, 26th and 53rd Divisions, 3rd Corps. After the Ottoman evacuation, Jerusalem remained within range of Ottoman artillery, and with the opposing sides in such close proximity, there was still the risk of counterattack. An offensive to push the Ottoman army further northwards away from the city was planned for 24 December 1917, but was delayed due to bad weather. So the EEF was prepared for battle when the Ottoman army launched their counterattack at 1.30 on 27 December. This fell on units of the 60th London Division holding the Nablus Road. The initial objective of the Ottoman attack, was a line of villages, including Nebi Samuel 1 mile 1 kilometers in front of their starting positions. Their focus was towards Tel El Ful, a hill east of the Nablus Road about 3 miles 4 kilometers north of Jerusalem defended by the 60th London Division. This Ottoman attack on Tel El Ful initially drove the British outposts back and captured several important places. However, the engagement continued for two days and was ultimately unsuccessful. A general EEF infantry advance on a 12-mile front moved their front line 6 miles northwards on the right and 3 miles on the left. They pushed the whole line along the Nablus Road to beyond Ramallah and Baira by 30 December. Final objectives were gained and the line along the whole front secured. In the middle of February 1918 the line was extended eastwards to Jericho in the Jordan Valley, when it was finally secured on the Dead Sea. Topic. Summation of offensive The EEF had evolved into a genuinely imperial all-arms force, and the offensive was a nearly ideal instance of the proper use of all arms in combination. The scale of the enormous territorial gains of the Southern Palestine Offensive, contrasted with the British Offensive on the Western Front at Cambrai. Fought in Flanders from 20 to 30 November, it ended with heavy losses and no territorial gains. The French army was still recovering from a serious mutiny, while the Italians were defeated at the Battle of Caporetto, and Russia was out of the war following the Bolshevik Revolution. Allenby's advance by comparison made considerable territorial gains, helped secure Baghdad and the oilfields at Basra in Mesopotamia, encouraged the Arab revolt, and inflicted irreplaceable losses on the Ottoman army. These substantial victories of the EEF's campaign from October to December 1917 resulted in the first military defeat of a central power, which led to a substantial loss of enemy territory. In particular the fighting from 31 October to 7 November against the Ottoman Gaza Sharia Beersheba line resulted in the first defeat of strongly entrenched, experienced and, up until then, successful Ottoman armies which were supported by artillery, machine guns and aircraft. Topic. Footnotes Topic Notes Equals 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 citations <laughs>